boys. It is time, 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 time. For DFC Fight Night 41. Don't pay no mind to that title. I ain't perfect, boys. I ain't perfect. That intro is dope, man. Don't you... Don't you be shit talking that intro, Max. I, I fucking you you know you know how hard I I had to try to make myself appear in the background all ominous and shit? Most people can't even tell when I come in. I'm just like in the background randomly. You don't even know when or how I got there. And then I'm just staring. And you're like, shit. That's Cooley. I see Cooley in that smoke. And he's and he is smoking. The intro is meant to be ominous. Yet entertaining. Not entertaining, but entertaining. To the people that pay attention to the subtleties. All of the characters that pop in, they're meant to keep the avid watcher slightly entertained while they wait. All right, that's enough. That's enough reverb on my boys. That's, that's enough of that shit. I don't know. Maybe I should do the whole stream reverb, though. I think it sounds pretty epic. And it's really different. But the most important part of this stream is this fight card, man. It's going to be epic. I, I reached out to Toshank to see if we'll we'll be able to uh, see him fight tonight. Um, he actually has two matches in the bin that we could potentially uh, see. Uh he's got one from last week that he never he they never got to it, him and Chu 30 which is a sin v sin matchup for the title. And then, uh, so I guess this, whether or not Stadium PK gets the title is dependent on the results of that match. Uh, sort of weird setting up the card this week, not gonna lie, uh, really weird. But uh, we got there, we did it, we, we made it work. It, it's not the prettiest, but it's there. Uh, you know, we, we, got some, we got some matches up, man. And holy shit, these matches are insane. These matches are insane. So, so Toshank versus Stadium is what's officially on the card. Official title bout. Now, that's actually going to be very hard. Uh, it's actually, I think it's a fair match, but it's going to be very hard for Toshank. Uh, if he if he can pull this off, that is definitely some, it's an adversity style fight, man. Uh, going up against Stadium PK, who just had a savage, close, close victory against Doombringer on the Cold Sorceress. Now, Mind you, the current DFC rules really favor someone who wants to fully commit to a cold sorceress uh, and go full Vita, full damage, and that's exactly what Doombringer has done. So it was quite the it was quite the test for Stadium PK, and he pulled it off in a five four very close victory. Toshank v Stadium should be fun to watch, one hundred percent, man. I'm really hoping we get to see it. Stadium PK, much deserving of another title shot. Uh, last time Stadium went for the title, it was against Elite. And as anybody knows, the better you are in those duels, the worse they get. The better you are, the worse they get. If you're if you're just a shit cash like me, it can be really fun dueling Elite. But if you're good... It might be a miserable duel. But I will tell you one thing. Elite certainly has his work cut out for him tonight. Because he's going up against Doombringer. The all-in, full Vita Cold Sorceress. Now, we're, we're going to get to see what he's got against Elite. Uh, any win against Elite is 
a big statement for anybody. I mean, this guy was the reigning defending champion for the longest time, man. Uh, it's a big statement for anybody. Uh, if Doombringer can pull it off, that is probably going to be one of the coolest wins I've ever seen. Uh, but also, sorceresses tend to give Necros a hard time. And I think uh, the current DFC rule set, I believe, paves the way for Doombringer to actually win this match against the Elite. Uh, I think it's possible. I think it's it, there's a there's a chance that this could happen, uh, just because of the amount of stack that we can see on a uh, on a character. But someone that went in full Vita, all in, like uh, like Doombringer does, it, it could be a big problem for Elite. So we're gonna we're gonna see. But he is full Vita, so those spirits are gonna hurt. 4:20 time for Dong. I'll cheers to that, my dude. I'll cheers to that. I got I got me some uh, I got me some Malibu tonight, man. Coconut rum. Coconut sailor rum here to match the hoodie. Uh, and I actually am not dueling tonight. Uh, I'm going to be dueling days or tomorrow, but here's the thing. I'm an American, and a lot of Americans have tomorrow off. I am no exception. So I was thinking that tomorrow, whereas I got the day off, I ain't got to be at work. I played hooky this week, too. I was thinking I might actually do a bonus stream tomorrow. Bonus stream probably on Twitch. Uh, I don't want to completely snub Twitch right now. We got some subscribers on there, and I owe those people my time. All right? Uh, I technically don't. But it feels good to give my subscribers my time. I don't want to tell you what's on the agenda yet, but that duel will probably be in there. Uh, but the agenda might be a whole day of complete juck fuckery and i'm talking to the highest degree to the highest degree my match versus elite wasn't title chu or maddie had the belt at the time this is my first oh that's right that's right good on, that's uh good on you for for uh saying that dude that's right i think it was actually maddie i think it was maddie that had the title at that point he had beaten Elite, uh, and it was a weird time because it was like an interim title that he had won because of some vacancy, so technically he was the champion. Yeah, it was, it was really weird. Really weird, but uh, yeah, certainly makes sense, man. Certainly makes sense. Yep. So this is your first official title shot. God damn, dude, I hope you get it, but it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough, man. Uh, barbs are, are typically really good against assassins unless an assassin knows how to be an assassin. Uh, you know, I've seen, for example, Bowie take out some of the nastiest barbs uh, on his assassin just by taking the trapper, uh, you know, taking that approach. And we're going to see if Toshank can do it tonight and if it pays off against Stadium. But I think Stadium might have the aggression needed on that barb to take down Toshank. Uh, it's certainly going to be a very tough test. Certainly going to be a very tough test. And I, and I know we've seen Stadium go up against Dazer. In fact, let me check. Uh, let me actually check this. Let me... Uh, I, I can't quite remember how this was. But we got some records. I'm pretty sure he went up against Dazer. Did he? Or am I misremembering something? No, he didn't. I was going to say we might have some data. That or I didn't put it in here. Man, I was I was hoping I thought we might have had some data with uh with Stadium going against Dazer. Let me see all stats. Maybe I'm maybe I'm missing something. Stadium. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Dazer, has he ever Oh my god, they've never fought. So we don't know how Stadium is against top tier sins. I guess we we have seen actually no, we kinda do. We kinda do. We saw him go up against Chu 30 on a trapper. I can't remember if that was with his barb or not. Let me see. This, this would uh, this would probably we could probably say barb. It was. It was. <laughs> Boys, we could seriously be looking at a new champion. We could seriously be looking at a new champion tonight. Because Stadium has done it before against one of the top sins. Ooh. 
All right, I'm going to ask uh, if you will allow my build. Deck statting is putting me over max block. Let me know if I should respec to a normal build or if you're okay with uh, with dueling my weird deck statted low HP sin. Yeah, let him know, underrated. Basic. So technically, we recently changed the rules to give you the background story on it and lowered the block on sins, period. But if you have a Blade Fury Trapper, the, the rule states this. You could do that, but if you put more than one point into uh, Lightning Century, then you can't have over 60 block. Well, Max's Blade Fury setup pretty much makes it so if he puts on any shield, he has max block. Because he has such low HP. He's committed basically everything to dexterity. So he's wondering if that's alright. But that's basically the, that's basically the uh, background on it. Yeah, and I want you to know, I think it would be a really cool match to watch, but technically it's against the rules. I'll allow it if you both agree to it. Uh, but I just want you to know, there's no pressure either way, underrated. You you don't have to duel that if you don't want to. Uh, there's no judgment either way because it's technically against the rules. Uh, you know... If we change it, we'll have to do it later. It will not apply to this match. You will have the decision if you'd like to allow that. Um, you know, it's definitely a recent rule, though. It's hard making rules around sins, especially Max's sins. Sick. Underrated's down, so we get to see that duel. I I'm actually pretty pumped about that then. I didn't want to show you how pumped I was until we had a verdict on it. But holy shit. Oh, man, that's going to be dope. By the way, what's up, Maddie? That's going to be sick. So it's like a Blade Fury Hybsin versus, ooh, versus another, I would imagine, a uh, Spider, Spider Sin, Whirl Girl for sure. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be beautiful. I would just, I would just trap Max to death. CT cast traps. Stay out of the way of that Blade Fury. Keep him chasing. I would late, if I was you, dude, I would late the fuck out of Max. I'd have five traps set up everywhere every time he tell he didn't. Punish him for that Max block. If he wants to stay on the outside, we CT. I already got a game plan. You're lucky you ain't going up against me on a sin, Max. I'd fucking CT late the shit out of Max. How's that max block against these lightning centuries? That would be the question I would ask. Yep. That's going to be a great match, man. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it. Dude, I'm going to get I get the trifecta though. Tomorrow on the bonus stream, you guys will probably see this depending on when uh when Dazer is available, but it's going to be me and Dazer, the third match, the third duel. In the DFC between Dazer and I. I got the first one. With his decked out sin. He learned my build. He got his rematch. And he got he got his revenge. But this time. Two things are working in my favor boys. Number one. He told me not to say this. But number one. He sold all of his shit. And he's got a budget sin now. He wanted to prove to the world that you could be a budget hybrid sin. That you didn't have to spend a million forum gold to have a sin that was viable. Well, we're going to put that to the ultimate test. What's up, Chris? We're going to put that to the ultimate test. He's going to have to beat Cooley for the third time for the uh, in the third catch match. He's going to have to beat Cooley. And we're going to see if his budget hype sin can do the trick. But the other thing that I have working in my favor now, I know how to duel his build. I, got, I put myself to the test last week against Dirty. I didn't think I could do it. It was a very long, grindy match. Thank you, Dirty, for putting up with that bullshit. But I got there. 3-2. FT3, 3-2 finish. And now, I'm going to do 
the same thing but worse to Dazer. By the way, if anybody has that helm I was talking about last week, I'll give you 500 forum gold for it. But if you got one and you don't want to sell it, someone was willing to lend me one last duel, I will certainly take it versus Dazer. Two paladin skills, 25 IDR, two sockets. DJ, what's up, my dude? I'm doing good, man. I'm pumped up for the DFC. Pumped up for the DFC tonight. Let me actually load up my client here because we got a lot of time, man. Uh, I started a little early to talk about and hype up this card. So we got we got a lot of time. Uh I might I might have to get I might have to get in the zone with dueling. Might have to do it. Maybe we'll I don't know. I don't know what I what I'll do. But we'll have to kick some ass. Um, yeah, dude, but I'm just, I'm so pumped about this card. Elite versus Doombringer, Toshank versus Stadium, Go Gators versus Dingus. This is going to be interesting. So right now, just to let you guys know, the match between Elite and Go Gators is still not over. It's, it, there's a, there's a chance we could actually see the end of it tonight. It was 3-3 when we left off before. Long ass duel. There was a whole bunch of... Uh, I mean, Stadium PK won the meme game after that. Uh, it, 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 yeah, I, I should have just said that they were still dueling from last week and not neither one of them had slept because you guys might have actually believed that too. Uh, you know, it, you guys might have actually believed that. Could have told you that someone was pooling for them uh, and that that duel was still going on. And it would have actually been believable. Uh, I think it would, like, there's, there's a subsect of people out there that would have believed that. But unfortunately, no, they stopped after 3-3 three, three because it was a long-ass duel, man. Like, two, two and a half, three hours. Uh, and they're going to finish it up tonight. But this is what we've said. I said, all right, 3-3 three, three is enough. We saw how the last shit went. One more round. One more round. It's now FT4. We're not going to sit through all of this shit. One round. Whoever wins it, we get it. It's a close duel. Next round wins. Thanks, Ru. Appreciate you, man. Uh, how do we get you drunk on YouTube? Can't redeem my 100k channel points here. Uh, that's okay. I'll, a, I'll be on Twitch tomorrow, I think, for a bonus stream, Maddie. Redeem them all. But uh, just also, uh, the more you chat, the more I'll cheers. That's what I say. The more you chat, the more I'll cheers. So uh, if we get if we get a hype chat like we always have, I'm just going to keep cheersing. Keep talking with me and interacting. And I'll cheers to every good thing you guys say. Fucking no limit on these. And we got we got the hard shit, man. We got the Malibu. We got the Malibu rum. It was sitting in the fridge, dude, from the uh from the ex-girlfriend. I think we got it when we were down in Virginia Beach. Chug, I'll cheers to that. Yep, I will I will cheers to that. Cheers to you guys. Cheers to you, Chris. Cheers to you, Clutch. I already dueled Jam Jam, but maybe I can give him a second chance. Did you win? Oh my god, dude. Windy versus Sin. That's actually... I was looking forward to seeing that. Because uh, technically, Jamie Jams is new to the Sin. But it's technically a bad matchup for a Druid. So if you, the way you're talking, Root, tells me you might have won. And that's a very big win. Because uh, I, I try to make these matches that are fair... That is significantly balanced, uh, uh, unbalanced on the side of the sin, but the skill level of root on a druid, I figured, might balance it. And it sounds like not a horrible call. The, the matchmaker for the DFC is fucking gold. You guys are blessed to have such a good matchmaker in the DFC. He must spend hours, hours putting these fights together. Jam Sin is G fucking G. Dude, that's what I heard. He posted in the Discord. And he said that he had just put it together. He was pumped up. It was it was in response to the video that went out this week. He's pretty pumped about it, man. He's pretty pumped about it. I figured I'd give him a, a easy matchup, but not an easy opponent this week. To test out this Sin. Oh shit, Dong, thanks for reminding me. I gotta make a note, because I don't think I set up that command. I'm making a note right now. 
Making a note right now to set up this Discord command. I'm just putting Discord here. Looks like Doom and Vamp are going. Oh my god, they are? Oh my god, they are? Oh shit, by the way, I just want to say this, boys. If this is your first time in the DFC and you're wondering what the heck to do, I just want you to know, all you got to do, touch base with your opponent. If you're having trouble finding your opponent, just tag one of the mods in the chat, uh, in, in DFC chatter, and we'll help you find your opponent on Discord. And... Once you guys have a game up, you're ready to go. All you got to do is jump into the join the stream channel in Discord and share your screen. And that lets us know that you're ready to go. But it looks like Vamp. Vamp is ready to go. Here, let me pop this out. Y'all might hear some teleporting. It looks like he's clearing the moor right now. Oh my god, dude. This could be huge. We, we were going to get on and kill some time, but if these guys are ready to go, well, shit. Who am I to say? Who am I to say that we should not be watching this? Damn it, I lost my mouse. This fucking Discord setup. Alright, there we go. Yeah, that looks good. Let's transition over. This is... We just watching... We watching... Uh, it looks like they're clearing the moor and pooling right now. Oh, man. Doom is always down. Yeah, Doom ain't messing around, man. Doom is ready to go. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, I really hope, I really hope, I always root for the other guy versus Elite because, again, in my in my mind, Elite is the best Necro in the world. He's one of the most savage duelers in the world, dude. Like, he's so good. And he can be a pain to duel against, but so can Doombringer, dude. And I can't help but root for my boy, Doom. I want to see him take down... The previous champ with this cold sword. Do you know how big that's going to be? If he can do it, you know how big that's going to be? He's probably full Vita unless he switched up and went ES versus a Necro. I'm not sure if he does that. I always got to root for the underdog. Exactly, dude. That's what I do. It's going to be a long duel. You know, I was thinking about... Uh, I was thinking about turning these these uh, duels into FT3s, but then it gets weird if people are on different servers. So possibly we could turn them into FT4s. I bet that would save some time. Like, just turn them into best of seven FT4s. Yeah. I mean, hell, we're early, boys. We got time. I do have a hard stop tonight at nine. I got a friend coming up. Uh, my my dear friend Emma. We're gonna uh, we're gonna jam some quarry, dude. We started playing the quarry last week she's into like games and story games and shit and this was the only night she could make work to finish this game we can't we couldn't leave it unplayed and unfinished i should have asked her if she wanted to stream it but this is dfc night boys we couldn't just start playing the quarry fucking mid duel you kidding me talk, talk about killing a vibe i have to think through my decisions and shit i want to be able to spam spam and drink you can't do that playing the quarry this certainly isn't a, a regular elite map, that's for sure. Look at Doom's name, Emma Frost. I never got that. So, like, is that a thing? Who is Emma Frost? Oh, I gotta look this up. We're, we're looking this up. Who is Emma Frost? Emma Frost, also known as the White Queen, has evolved from a supervillain and foe of the X-Men to becoming a superhero, one of the X-Men's most central members and leaders. Frost belongs to a subspecies of humanity called mutants, born with superhuman abilities. She is an ur urbane telepath with a well-noted dry wit. I mean, that's basically Doombringer. Dry wit. White. It's basically him. It's basically him. I mean, that's he's, that's a perfect name. Damn, you didn't even hesitate to look that up on straight. Yes, it, it could have been a porn star. That would have been. That certainly would have been. Can you imagine? We got pictures and shit. It certainly st strike on the new channel. That's how it would have been. No, no fucks. We just, we just do it sometimes. I mean, if it's a porn star, whatever. 
How many blizz does he tank? Good question. We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out, dude. I think with the cold stack rules, it, it's, it probably won't be many. It probably won't be many. By the way, I just want to thank everybody uh, for subbing so far tonight. Really means a lot. I'm going to cheers to you guys. God damn, that was way bigger of a gulp than I thought it was. This like funnels down and it doesn't look like there's much, but there is a lot left in there. This is going to be a fucking night, boys, with Malibu rum. God damn. But cheers to you boys. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate the subs. Trying to get to 1K on this new channel and start things off right. Hopefully going to uh, move some streams over here. Some streams and certainly a lot of uh, clipped and important Diablo content. That may or may not be as polished as on the main channel. But it will certainly be timely and worth the time. Yeah, I just needed a refill. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. All right, man. Vamp is might be feeling some type of way, too. Vi Vamp might be feeling some type of way. Because if you remember, Vamp was feeling some type of way last week. And he still ain't finished that duel. He has 409 cold resist. Is that what he has? Is that what it came up as? Hold on. Hold on. I got I to gotta pop into this game. I'm going to pop into this game. I'm going to join on Cooley so they know who I am. All right, hold up. Yo, Vamp, can you mouse over your CR real quick? Four oh nine. Okay. All right. We just got to check on this real quick. We got to check on this real quick. Make sure, make sure that's legit. I think that's a little high. I think that's a little high. Thank you for noticing that too, Seth. Sorry if you guys are getting a black screen here. Here, let me fix this. Thank you for uh, for checking on that, dude, and noticing that. Cold resist. Yeah, it's capped at 410. 410. He's legit. How dare I how dare I doubt the champ? 410 is the max. He's legit. He's legit. 409 is legit. No Ravens 410 is GM. Yep. No Ravens, right? Sorry, only caught. Yeah, it's no Ravens, right? I'll just clarify that. Yeah, okay, cool, cool. Cool. I'm looking forward to this, boys. Don't fucking let me down. Hick Elite's ass. Doom. <laughs> oh man vamp the champ vamp the champ all right let's see how a necro does it boys let's see how a top tier necro deals with a nasty cold sorceress let's see how he does it He's going spear. He's shooting the spears. Very interesting, man. Very interesting. And he's staying way off the screen of Emma Frost. Mad off screen in here. He's making he's making Doombringer chase him. And just launching spears against this full Vitasaur. Interesting. Doom's gonna have to be quick at grabbing these name locks and possibly even CT casting. I would think that the CT casting would outrange those spears, but we're going to see. Look at this, just spamming the spear, dude. Uh, I don't think Gollum is immune to cold, no. I don't think so.
Sir, a blizz go aggro on neck. I'm um, two shot. Oh my god. Oh my god. Is AZ's probably not one shot. He's saying he's one shot in game. He's probably not one shot. Yeah, I, I don't think Gollum is immune to it. I don't think so. Look, we'll shrink this fucking map. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> look, at fucking, look at this. These guys are fighting with the... I think... I think Doom has launched more words than he's launched blizzards. What a fucking match. Oh, oh, he, he tried to get him talking. That was smart as shit. He tried to get him talking. He knew he couldn't. He knew he couldn't resist. He tried to get him talking, and then he tried. He went up and tried to drop a blizz on him. Fucking get his get his shit talking working against him. Oh shit! Doom is coming to play, boys. Doom is coming to play. If I would have killed him like that with one blizz, I'd have said, "Don't type in the more." That's what I'd have said. Oh my god, that was smart. That was smart as shit, bro. That's some strategic shit talking. That's some strategic shit talking. Yeah, now here comes the wall banging. He might have actually landed that spear too. That was very, very close. Trying to predict the angle of Doom. Doom trying to tilt him sideways, get himself a win. Top tier strats. You get someone that's gonna complain and gonna shit talk. You use it against them, boys. That's what you do. That's what you do. Whoo! That is insane. Well played. I hope he. I hope he keeps up these dirty tricks. He, it, it's going to be interesting though because it does look like. Uh, it does look like Doombringer is still full Vita. So he's a little scared of these spears. He's a little scared of these spears. He ain't trying to get close. And uh, and Elite is trying to just randomly predict where he's coming from. I'm not going to make him chase and run into random spears. I'm not going to make him chase and run into random... Spears. We can shrink the map, though. Or maybe try for a box map. Yeah, that'll get him. That'll get him slinging some shit. It's so funny because both of these guys have like a distance style. Shooting spears at air in a matchup you have advantage on. Is this guy serious? It's a very interesting strategy. Uh, I honestly think it... I think that Elite is unsure how to approach this matchup here. He might be a, li a little... A little prideful and timid from that last time that he got surprised by Go Gators being so nasty, and he doesn't he does he doesn't really want to overextend himself early on. He wants to really play it play it safe and feel this out and feel out Doombringer style. All right, so what we might have to do? I'm gonna start looking for a map, boys. I'm gonna start I'm gonna start me looking for a map. We might, we might just go to, we might just go to the, uh, we couldn't go to the snake pit, dude, because it's fucking, it's just too small. It favors the cold sword. So we couldn't go to snake pit. Oh man, he's talking shit. Get him, Doom. Fucking get him. Get him. He's mid map, dude. He's talking his shit. 
Fucking toe pops in game talks, man. Shit. <laughs> Kill him, Noom. What are, what are you doing? Champ out. <laughs> oh my god. He's catching a lot of hate here. He's catching a lot of hate. I think really what he's trying to do is this is kind of a feel out process in the beginning part of this duel. Like if I'm being if I'm being honest about this, this is a feel out process from both players. You're going to see a distance duel here for a little bit. I would anticipate that when they figure out the right strategy, it's probably going to pick up. But I think both of these guys know what's on the line. Uh, I think Doombringer knows that a win against Elite is fucking huge. And like Elite also is feeling some type of way about being surprised at how good Go, Go Gators was. And he's not taking these ridiculous risks that we saw him take last week uh, and, and not underestimating his opponent. Like, I think that's honestly what's going on. He's playing it a little safe. Mm. That's what we're waiting for. It, it's very interesting, too. If you notice, uh, if you notice, Elite isn't summoning any pets. And the reason for that is there's actually a glitch right now where if you have a pet up, Blizzard hits twice. It's so weird. It's so weird. I would kill this Zork in 30 seconds or die trying. Yeah, I'm going to give him a little bit because we don't want to watch him a match like this. Basically, Elite, again, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. He's trying to feel out his opponent. You know, I, I don't want to... We, we shouldn't overreact to this. He's trying to feel out his opponent, but we'll give him a little bit. We'll give him a little bit. These guys are both trying to feel out each other, and they're both distance duelers. Let's give him a little bit. Because this is also the first time ever in, I believe, DFC history, Elite has dueled against a cold sorceress probably a sorceress in recent history he always gets nasty like nvd matchups and all of this he may be out of practice man he may be out of practice yeah and he, he may just be trying to feel this out but we'll give him a little bit we'll give him a little bit Ice Blast is useless versus Neck. Uh, that's what made Cold Sorks good against Neck, especially ES. Uh, the fact this is full Vita with zero FHR, Elite can win by up spearing with his with his stack. Yeah, yeah, I would think so too, dude. Uh, I would honestly think so too. I think the stack is good enough to be able to get on the inside and land a couple of spears against the full Vita. That's what I would assume. I don't think it's fully on the Sorceress to to aggress here. I, I really don't. I'm, I'm not fully convinced it, that it's that it's 100% on the Sorceress to aggress. Given the circumstances. Yeah, I, I would think both could be aggro in this. Both could be aggro. You wait, like the second that the second that Doom drops a blizz and it misses, he's vulnerable. I would think that the Necro almost like it's almost like a druid losing his pets. Like when you drop that blizz, I don't care how fast your cast rate is. There's a cooldown. Oh my god, these guys weren't even fucking hostile. These fucking guys. You know the funny thing? We couldn't even tell. We now have a DFC match, boys. We now have a DFC match. They <laughs> fucking... All right, let's see how it goes now. I was wondering why some of those spears didn't hit. I was wondering why some of them, I was like, that was a good spear. That was a fucking good spear. Even, even, yeah, no name lock. <laughs> what the flying fuck is this? What the flying fuck? All right. Well, the good thing is, at least they know the patterns of each other now. Let's see how this will change. What do you think we should go to for a map? Oh man, there was a there was a spear. I believe that connected. Hard to tell if it was from the pet or something. But look at this. It's just random spears here. I can't say this is an intelligent offense. I can't say this is an intelligent offense.
Elite, try to be more deliberate I am with your attacks. What the fuck is going on? Oh, now Doom is talking. Let's see if let's see if Elite goes and chumps him. Yeah, I would think honestly that would probably be better. Oh man, and he connected. There we go. There we go. That's what we want to see. That's what we want to see. That was a nice chain from Elite. That was a nice chain from Elite. Let's see if we can actually uh let me see if Doombringer is streaming too. Doom is. All right, let's watch it from Doom's standpoint. Let's see how he's approaching this duel. How's, how's the volume? Is that too low? Is it good? I am overburdened. All right. So we're going to see how it goes. We're checking it out. We're seeing this. This We're now watching this from Doombringer's standpoint. I, I, before I make any calls on, on like, moving the map and shit, I want to see how both players are fighting. I don't want to just watch from Elite's perspective, because I'm not going to lie. It is kind of a distance duel that just seems like both players are launching random shit. But I, but before I, you know, before I say that and double down on that, I want to check out and see what, uh, what Doom's doing. We can't have the perspective bias, right? We already know what Elite's doing. Launching random spears in all directions. And if that's how it's going to be, I will fucking go snake pit. It's like Elite versus Elite. <laughs> yeah, I would think he could, too. He can grab the name locks with, uh, with his uh, versus Doom's pet. Dude, I'm telling you, I think he could. I think he could be a little more aggro. I think he certainly could. Yeah, it, it could be a it, it could be a, a very aggro matchup. I think Doom Doom is hunting for a name lock and doing some CT casting. He's also very slow to grab the name lock coming in in a couple of times that I've seen it. He could be a little nervous for this fight too, man. He could be a little nervous for this, but he he is aggressing here. He he's doing okay. He he's just having trouble grabbing name locks coming in, and, and he's also not trying to overcommit against the elite. I, I totally get it. Well, let's see if he can connect, man. He was doing short tellies sometimes instead of covering distance quicker. Yeah, that that's true. He's CT casting his uh his Blizz sometimes, but I think CT casting the telly could also pay off. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's there's certainly things that both players could do differently on their sides for sure. Let's let's see how it goes. There we go. There we go. Now we say it and now he's CT casting. This reminds me the Rose Nama Yunez versus Carla Esperanza fight. I don't I'm not quite familiar with it. I'm not quite familiar. I don't I don't remember it. This is nuts. Oh my god, he had a name lock there. He had a name lock, but uh we see Elite teleporting off the map with a name lock. Oh, and there he goes. Nice chain. Nice chain. Okay, here we go. See, those are the exchanges we like seeing. Like it's dangerous for the sorceress and it's dangerous for the necro. But I feel like most of this duel is just these guys looking for each other. Yeah, what the ever living dude. Oh, really? Is that what it is, clan? You lead his 400 life, is he? Oh my god. So was that was that from one blizz? Holy shit, let's check it out. Let's check it out. No way. Oh my god, he is. He is. He got clocked with a blizz, dude. Elite got clocked. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Okay. This is what we're going to do. I think after this round, regardless, I want to say this before it finishes, we might make this an FT3 just because it might go on a while and I don't want to put players through that. This might go on a while, so I don't want to put I don't want to put these guys through that. Oh, I think so too. I think so too, man. I, I think there should be a lot more spirits involved. I I'm curious, and it could just be because I'm not a hundred percent sure on the best strategy for a Necro in this matchup. There could be a reason he's using spear. But I would have thought there would have been a lot more bone spirit. I would think. FT10. Yeah, spear only is very weird. Oh, there it is, man. There it is. GG. All right, what we're going to do. GG. We're going to make this an FT3. Just because I think this is probably bound to go on a while. He said good duel. That was the <laughs> Yeah. Um, this map is terrible. I'm letting him know in game. This map is terrible for this duel. Where should we go? This is this is what I'm looking at. Hold on. Uh, this is uh, this is what I'm looking at. Where should we go? We should go fucking first level of the uh, of the tower. Y'all gotta fight in a phone booth. Just cut the map. Just cut the map at the boxes. Okay, let's. Cut. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's cut the map at the boxes. Y'all are staying in them for the most part. But let's just start there. We'll cut map at boxes and do FT3. Wow, man. So I think Elite got two-shotted by the Blizz. Even with 409 stack. Tristram. Ooh. That's interesting. It could... F yeah. That might not be horrible, honestly. But they wouldn't be able to step into the portal. Actually, it, they, it can't work. They can't step into the portal if they're hostile. They can't get to Tristram. Well, what did he say? <laughs> Toshank says, you call yourself a more aggro neck than me. Help yourself. Look at this. Look at this harassment from the champ. Look at this har harassment. I know. Uh, honestly, dude, uh, I, I would say this. I think it was a I think this first round was both these players trying to feel each other out. And Elite is getting caught against a uh, against a build that he hasn't really dueled a lot. And, you know, we can... It's very easy to tell that, like, he may not be as comfortable going up against a, a Cold Sorceress. For sure. Uh, and and also, Doombringer may be, you know, knowing knowing what's on the line and knowing his opponent. And seeing the, the pattern of Elite. Of, you know, he knows that Elite is going to make try to make him run into his attacks. So he's also playing around that. So I, I honestly think the history of Elite's dueling style against uh, against certain characters has led to this being a duel of the distance. So what we've done is we've we've cut the we've cut the map at the boxes, so you can't go past the boxes. Um, 
and we're going to do FT3. We're going we're to see if that changes anything. We're going to start small. We don't like to overreact. I know sometimes we'll see this duel, and we'll, we'll see a duel like this and be like, man, we need to change everything. We need to throw it all out. But trust me, boys. We start small. We start small. We don't, we don't want to overreact. Yeah. I, I think both players could certainly benefit from a little more aggro. I, I think Doom is actually doing a great job, uh, you know, given the circumstances. But I, I think for sure, I, I wonder if this will change Elite's approach here. Because I think Toshank has a point. That... There are certain circumstances where being aggro on the Necro seems like it could be very good against a full Vita Sorceress. Seems like it could be very good. Uh, but aggroing Doom, to be fair, is very, very risky. Yes. I would think so. I, I would think so. I, I would think probably like an Ohm Ohm Helm uh, or, or like even one ohm in the helm, twenty absorb, because you can do that. Uh, I would do. I would probably do that. I think that's where the holes are in the in the current rule set that a lot of people aren't abusing. Like, use your five max cold res, twenty sorb, and then go to like what the three sixty that it is. I'd have to check the number, but like go to that. I think that's technically the best stack. Oh, yeah, 85-410 is allowed, right? Is it? Yeah, no Raven. Yeah, that's technically allowed. I think Joby's right. Actually, you might be right. Oh, I see what Max is saying. With the minus res, with the minus res on his gear, you, it doesn't matter with the max res. That's actually a good point. That's actually a good point, because his max res is always going to rip your res down below what it is for the for the... Like, it might look like you have 85 res, but you really have, like, 60. Because, you know, or even less. Like, 30, probably. Because of the... Yeah. Yeah, it, so maybe the max res doesn't even matter. Yeah, that, that could be true. That could be true. It, it might not matter. Yeah, that's insane. Wow, what an interesting, what, what an interesting duel. So we're, we're going to try it a little different. Like I said, we're going to FT3. We're going to cut the map this time. Uh, both these players had a round to kind of feel each other out. I think Elite has noticed, and this is something that, like, a, a lot of people shit on Elite, and, and I get it. I get it. But you also got to notice he's a very deliberate player, right? He's a very deliberate player, and he learns from his losses in every round, in every match. This guy is solid, man. Uh, there's a reason this guy has been champ. And no, it's not just because of the sheer ability to lates at times when, when he knows he can. All right? He's a very skilled dueler. And I think he's going to learn from that round one. Uh, I think he's going to learn that that approach with the random spears and trying to make him run into it didn't work, right? Because as much as you can launch random spears hoping to hit your opponent, Doom can leave blizzards randomly in the moor too. He can start to predict where you're going to run to and have a blizzard waiting for you, which is exactly what he did. So I think Elite needs to be a little more deliberate in his attacks. I, I think that's that's what needs to happen. We're going to see if it happens here. They've started up round two in this FT3 match. Let's cut over to, uh, to Vamp and see if it's changed anything. See if it's changed his approach, man. Teeth and Spirits? I would think so. That's what I would do. I, I'm very curious as to why he's not doing it. But props? I mean, props. Okay, there we go. There we go. Now we see some Spirits. Now we see some Teeth and Spirits. Oh, man. Okay, so this could be a different duel here now. This could be a very different duel. These spirits really could change a lot. Like, having delayed attacks in the more, I think, is going to change this round. It's also going to help him fight against the delayed attack of Blizzard, right? 
Like, Doom can just leave blizzards. Uh, he, he can just leave blizzards in the moor. Doom. Careful not to go past that second box. Don't go on the other side of it. We cut it for a reason, boys. Yeah, or make Cold Mastery work different. Like, buff up the cold damage. Cold Mastery's been so fucked, and, like... Uh, honestly, I'm happy you agree with me on that, Toshus. Like, it, it's, it's so fucked in PvP. It, it's always been the worst thing to make rule sets around. Every fucking Joe Smoge got something to say about any cold stack rule set. When we've got the best in the DFC, it's the best cold stack rule set. But every Joe Smoge got something to say about it. But it's the hardest thing, and it shouldn't be that hard. Cold mastery should work like every other mastery. But instead, you get this bullshit where it doesn't. Oh my god, dude, and he took him out. He took him out. Shuring it up. And Doom is pissed, says cut the shit, man. Doom is pissed. But he's seeing what it's like, man. I, I, I think, uh... I honestly think... This is what we expected to see from Elite. A bit more of those bone spirits. A bit more of those bone spirits. Because, I, 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 honestly, that's that's harder to deal with. Let's be serious as a full Vitasaur. I offered you spear only first duel. Okay, so this actually changes things. I'm actually glad Elite is saying this. So remember we were like, what the fuck is he doing? Spear only? Okay, so apparently he made an offer in this first round. I was wondering if that went on, but I didn't want to say it. I was wondering this. So he made an offer to spear only if the sorceress aggroed. I would assume that's probably how the deal went. It's still a shit deal, I think, but... Interesting. Great. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. What do we do? Open up the whole map? The, if we had the whole map open with the spear only. Uh, yeah, I guess we based it We based it on a different round. But yeah, I mean, that's it's weird. W what do you guys think is the answer to make this duel as fair as possible? Open up the full map and, uh, and allow spirit? Or do we cut it? I, I'm not going to lie. It's a tough match to change anything for. Like, you got you got two elites dueling each other, boys. Open it up or cut box spear only. Okay. Okay, pause. Whereas elite is using spirits now, full map is open. Yeah, these guys, because you can, you can just flood the moor with spirits. Yeah, I agree. He says this is pathetic. I agree. Y'all should aggro the fuck out of each other. That's what, that's what we want to see. We should duel in the first stage of the tower. And then we'd really see a duel, boys. All right, let me ask these guys. Okay, this, this is what I want to do. I want to see... I want to see a more aggro fight without all the rando spam. How do I create a situation 
to make that possible with you two. How how do how do I look? I ain't looking for complaints. I'm looking for solution. I gotta let him know. I'm looking for solutions, not problems. I'm looking for solutions, not problems. Is anybody else fucking dueling? Cause I'm 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 about to watch another duel and let these guys figure it out. Like, and just open it all up and just be like, all right, full maps open. Fucking do it. Holy shit, boys. It's it's fucking tough to ref matches. Okay? It's fucking tough. Would you wanna who raise your hand if you'd want to ref this shit? And I don't mean just because you want to hand out a DQ to Elite. Alright? I, I see it from both sides. I see it from both sides. We could fucking snake pin it. We could snake pin it. Okay, so let's clear... So let's clear up the confusion. Elite, you're using spears. Or spirits. If so, full map is open. If not, cut at boxes. Okay, full map is open. Full map is open. Okay. There we go. We just wanted to clear up the confusion so there wasn't any confusion going into round three here about where the map stops. Full map is open. Yeah, it doesn't mean he has to go there. Exactly. Exactly. Wow, what a shit show, boys. What a shit show. God damn, it's so, it's hard to, it's hard to ref it, man. I am overburdened. It might come to that, Demented. It might come to that. I might even, I might log out of this. I might need to get some pent-up aggression out after this duel and go grief some friggin' pubs. So, boys, if nobody's dueling after this in the Discord, we need to see some fucking action. We need to see some hunting. We need to see some aggro. And that's certainly what we're gonna do. That's cer that's certainly if we, if we don't have any other aggressive duels to watch after this, you can bet your you bet your bottom dollar. There's gonna be some tears and pubs. Can we watch you do pindle runs instead? Of, right, anything, anything. Yeah, it, I mean it's tough uh, uh, to give you a bit of the history, dude. A bit of the history for both these players. Like, Elite has caught a lot of hate in the past, and I totally get it. I, I don't want you guys to think that when I sympathize with Elite, uh, that I'm showing any bias towards him. I'm trying to be completely unbiased. I sympathize with Elite. Sometimes he, he has to keep his distance, right? But sometimes it's very demoralizing to watch him duel. It, it's very demoralizing. Uh, like right now, you can't even see him on the map. Uh, you know, I get it. I, I, you know, I, I understand he's a very prideful person. Uh, he takes a lot of pride in his necro skills as he should. He's the best necro in the world. But I don't know personally if I would want to be the best necro like this, right? Like, I would probably want to be a little more aggressive. Doom, on the other hand, you know, to be fair in my criticisms, Doom is one of the nastiest cold sorcerers that I've ever seen. Maybe the best. But he also has a very long distance style where he tries to bait his opponents into running into blizzards, right? He'll try to pick up on your style and make you run into blizzards. He won't necessarily aggress you, stomp you, you know. So, I mean, it's just the two styles going up against each other, meeting. It's two ships passing in the night is what it is. I think so, Max. I think so. Do it up, dude. Do it up. Yeah, I mean, it's it's friggin' weird. It's friggin' weird, Daryl. Uh, I'm not really sure what to do. 
And and honestly, you know, I'm not sure what what should be done, what we should do. It's two typically defensive players <laughs> it's sailing two ships past each other in the night and hoping somebody hits. Okay, so Elite is going back to... No, okay, he's using spirits too. But he's, he's launching a lot of spears. This map is just too big, dude. This map is just too big. But it's currently 1-1, one, one, man. Yeah. I, I'm starting to sympathize with it a bit in this in this duel, honestly, Toe. I'm starting to sympathize with it a bit. Because you gotta figure, it's not an ES Sork, right? This strategy against an ES Sork, I would completely agree with. If you've ever seen a Necro versus an ES Sork, it's miserable for the Necro. But Doom is a full Vita Sorceress. Like, Elite... Elite can afford to be a little more aggressive, right? Like, he doesn't necessarily need to spam this. He doesn't necessarily need to spam the map. I, I, I completely see that. I see that side of the argument. I am overburdened. Alright, this is what we're gonna do. Stool's going on forever. Alright, pause. Alright, stop. We're gonna finish this duel in the snake pit. We're gonna finish this duel in the snake pit, boys. I hate to do it, but we're gonna do it. I am overburdened. To the valley we go. To the valley we go. Where is this valley? I think both players are actually happy about it too. Neither one of these guys complained about going to the snake pit. Neither one of them. I expected one of them to be like, oh, fuck, fuck this. Uh, that's some shit, man. That's gonna fuck me. Neither one of them gave a shit, dude. Neither one of them gave a shit. All right, let's do this. Let's do this, boys. This this could be a lot better. All right, we gotta go get some. Uh, we gotta go get some. Uh, some TP scrolls. Wow, it's a long way to this snake pit, too. That's gonna be a long walk of shame for somebody. Who? I don't regret it. Ask me if I regret it. No fucking regrets, boys. The snake pit it is. By the very least, this duel will be a little quicker. Another tight box, 100p. Oh, here it is. Here, I just had to be patient. Another tight box, 100p. Uh, he's spirit spam runs coolly. No offense, bro, but one day you gotta call him on it. Okay, I honestly think uh, Doom has a point. Has a point, Elite. He's full Vita. So he can't take... What? One, two, three spears? I don't want to see... Good day. I don't want to see spam. Fix your rules around CR so I can aggro more. How do we remedy this? What sort of cold rules should we fix to allow aggro? Because, honestly, Elite is not the first person to say that. Doom. Stadium also felt the same way. Allow me to advise you. About rules, about stack.
It def is cold rules, yeah. So the cold rules are fucked. Ban cold sorks. Oh, shoot. Bro, he's dueling a Vita cold sork on 7k spears. Yeah. Yeah. Four forty cold res or four twenty plus raven. Okay, so Vamp says D two A and D two R rule says allow four twenty four fifty cold res or four twenty raven. I'm at four ten no raven. That's dumb as fuck. And I quote. Okay, so what if for this duel? We allowed Elite a Raven at 410 CR if he promised to aggro more. Would that work for both players? But Elite would have to aggro. MS, uh, Doom says, fuck no, dude, do the math. He two shots me. Yeah, uh, that's a fair point, too. Okay. Okay. Understandable. Uh, Doom has built his entire Sork around this rule set. So I'm not sure what to do. I, I'm stuck, boys. I, I don't know what to do. What do I, what do I do? Just limit mana? Problem is that you have to stack 400 plus cold res to begin to begin with uh, cold mastery. It's ridiculous in its current form. I, I couldn't agree more. New duels. Yeah, null the duel. Yeah. Sudden death. Uh, sudden death. No telly. They both two shot. How is it unfair? Yeah. I mean, I see it from all angles. It's so hard to make anything around this. I I'm just, I don't know what to do. It's very clear to me, though. The cold stack rules are hard. 420 plus Raven. So 420 plus Raven puts him at, like, if, if I'm doing the math, a 255 stack on that puts him still at 75 resist with 20 absorb. And that's with a full Vita sorceress ripping away, basically sundering in PvP. If <laughs> Doom would only have blizzard, we'd be moving on. Alright, well, uh... Yeah. Boys, this is what I want to do. I want somebody else to duel. So we can pop in and watch that. And then we'll put these guys in the snake pit. And let them figure it out. Okay, so for now... We go snake pit. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. What a what an incredibly difficult duel to ref, boys. I'm not gonna lie. What an incredibly difficult duel to ref. Joby says uh, both joined under DFC rules. Let them duel in more as per rules. Spirits allowed. No box. Watch other duels while they duel if they can't come to an alternate agreement. Bro, just play the duel out by the rules and complain about the rules after. Alright, GG. I literally do 70% of my damage and can't stack it. Okay. Final decision. 
Sorry for all this nonsense. No, oh, fuck that. I didn't apologize. It ain't my fucking fault. A lot of nonsense here. A lot of nonsense here. Joby had a good suggestion. You guys both joined under the current rule set. As flawed as it may be. Flawed or not flawed. Let's do it right. Blood more. Full map. Full map is good, guys. Full map. Yeah, we will. Uh, I'm cutting over to that right away, Jexus. I I'm cutting over to it. I need a, I need a mental break from this. This is like stressing me out. This fucking duel. Like, this is ridiculous, dude. Yep. Full map. Go nuts. FT3. Just so y'all aren't here all night. It's 1-1. One, one. Let's try to have a good duel. Coolie grief sesh. Yeah, it's going to turn into that. All right, boys, I'm here, but we'll be bouncing between duels. Elite. Be more deliberate in your attacks. Don't spam. Doom. Same. Try to aim your blizz and attacks deliberately. Not in town. That's what my chart does. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. It, it, it's tough. It's tough, boys. Let's pop. Let's pop into it. I mean, I've done what I can. Uh, like, it, it, it's tough. I know there's there's people calling for elite DQ. It, you just, you can't, dude. Like, it's just, I, I understand. I get where you're coming from. But you, you just can't. I mean, to some degree, he has a point. We saw him get two-shotted. Like, we saw him get two-shotted, boys. Like, the the cold stack rules do hurt quite a bit put it this way it's something that we're gonna have to take into account and just know that the current cold stack rules certainly do on multiple accounts uh they encourage people to not necessarily aggress the cold sorceress alternatively if they are so high and people can Aggress a cold sorceress. A cold sorceress doesn't have many outs. It's just, it's the simple fact of it. Cold sorceresses are so weird. Yeah. No wonder he sunglasses. <laughs> Windows 11, man. I accidentally upgraded and I can't go back, okay? Don't you judge me. Yeah, I, I honestly think that, like, there's there's an argument on both sides to not completely aggress the other one. If I'm being honest. If I'm being honest. Because both of them are, like, two-shot. I mean, it sucks, but... Honestly, dude, uh, if Elite does his Elite thing with spirit trains and teeth, it could be effective. Uh, you know, but it's, it's hard to say. I, I wish to never ref another duel like this again, ever in my fucking life. I can promise you one thing. Something's changing after tonight.
But under the current rule set, there's really not much we can do. Yeah. That doesn't uh and and has a has a cooldown. Yeah, no, I get you. I I get you. There's there's literally nothing I can do. There's nothing I could say. Because he's also two shot. It, it's it's weird. Because I, I don't pierce at 410. It, you could, though, right? Did someone win? Yeah, we, we could check that out for sure. Uh, I'm there, crafted. Th this is like the most stressful duel. What a, sh what a shit way to start this off. And it's not... It, it, I'm not directing this at the players. I totally get it. Both of these guys have a point. Like, if I'm being real, both of these guys have a point. Like, Doom is saying that he has a fucking cooldown on his 14k Blizz and isn't completely piercing 410. I totally get it. On the other side of that, Elite is getting two-shotted. Like, so he's making the argument that he shouldn't have to necessarily aggress. And I see that as well. But also, Doom shouldn't necessarily be expected to aggress either. Because he's also two-shot. So it's like the weirdest situation, dude. It's like the weirdest situation. I know, I wish I could, I wish I could make everybody happy. But unfortunately, I think the thing to do is just let it be. Like, just let it be for this, for this duel. I'm happy this duel is happening to point out something that's wrong. Something is wrong. I don't know if it's cold stack. I don't know what it is. Something is wrong. Like, particularly in this matchup. S so we, we have to figure it out. But also what we can do, let's cut over and let's check out, let's check out Max's stream here. Let's, let's see what's going on with, uh, with Max's duel. So, taking a break from the cold versus Necro. Holy hell, let's all catch our breath from that one. Uh, my blood pressure has never been so high watching somebody else in the blood more. But in light of that, we have this other awesome duel. Right? We've got Max with his... Crazy ass sin. I mean, he's always everything he does is is crazy. Everything. Every sin build we've ever seen this guy on is super original. You know what he's going up against his opponent with today? Oh my god, boys. Let me explain this duel. Let me explain this duel. I actually didn't expect to see that. Max just went down in round one to underrated. Underrated, living up to the name, dude. Max is one hell of a sin to take down. Let me tell you about Max's sin build, something very original. We're going from two cook, well, I shouldn't say cookie cutter builds, but two very uh, well-known builds to something that is not so well-known. Max has built a hybrid sin, but a hybrid sin in a very weird way. He's a trapper and a blade fury sin. He's got blade fury. Uh, they had to, the fighters had to come to yet another agreement because the rule set currently states that a sin cannot have over 60 block, right? Uh, period. But with this particular hybrid sin, Max has sacrificed a ton of HP to go full dex so that he can get massive hits from Blade Fury. So it's technically an illegal build. So the fighters had to agree on this before the matchup that this was okay. So they have. Underrated knows what he's up against. He knew that he did not have to agree to the duel like that, but he chose to, and he said that's okay. He would love to duel, duel uh, uh, Max's sin and put him to the test, and he did a hell of a job. I actually didn't expect him to do so much whirling there, uh, but he actually got him. He actually got him uh, in that in that round. Uh, got him with the whirlwind, and now Max trying to punish him, dude. Uh, thanks for the update, Joby. Currently 2-1 in favor of Elite. Yeah. What I might do in retrospect, because I would I would hate to hold Doom back because of that. I may just give both players a win regardless, like which essentially nullifies the duel and allows them to move on. Like it, it's just so weird. It's a shitty situation, but that's what I'm thinking about doing. Just because it's a really shitty situation. 
I, I get it for both players. I would hate to see Doom get held back from that. I would hate to see, uh, it, you know, I, I understand the argument from Elite. I think it's easy to root against Elite. I'll completely agree with you on that. Uh, you know, he doesn't have the most exciting style. That's for sure. Uh, but it's not always as unnecessary as people say. Oh my god, dude. And Max just Blade Furies the shit out of Underrated. He just like one-shotted Underrated with that Blade Fury as he came in. He like, he went from 70% to zero with that Blade Fury. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's just a tough situation. I, I honestly feel bad. I feel like potentially to some degree, possibly the rule set has failed those guys in that matchup. Uh, the reason we made cold stack rules so kind of one-sided is because sorceresses for so long have had the short end of the stick, particularly cold sorceresses. They haven't typically done well because rule sets always, they make it hard for them. Uh, so we have one of the most liberal cold stack rule sets where, you know, or I should say one of the most conservative ones. To sort of encourage cold sorcerers players to be able to contend with builds such as a druid, even though that's extremely hard. Doom has had insane duels against top druids making, you know, losing, but being 5-4. Like, it's been so close. And we want to give him a shot against the Necro, the most busted class in the game. So, like... Here we are, caught in this weird situation where we've tried to allow the Cold Sorceress to have an aggressive setup, you know, and be aggressive against these these duelers, these top duelers such as the Necro, and have a shot at, at taking them out. But that's not what we're seeing, right? Like, that's... If, if I'm reflecting on this situation, that's not what we're seeing. You know, we're, we're seeing still a conservative play with the ability to two-shot. It's a rough situation, and it's a completely understandable strategy, too. It's tough, man. I wish Cold Mastery wasn't the way it was. Yo, what up, Root? Uh, bring back 95 ES, Sork. Be stomping Necros all day. Fucking A. That might be what we do. Fucking A, dude. That might be what we do. I just want to see aggression, man. I want to see aggression. I want to see some creative shit like this. Look at this. Max... Getting absolutely stove on in that exchange. No fucks given. That's what we want to see. He just blade furies, man. This is what we want to see. Yeah, no doubt. I, I always am ruthless. I always I always talk shit on stream and I go back and I really think about it. But I, I love hearing you guys' opinions as to what should change too. Because it's all stuff I think about. It keeps me up at night. Rules keep me up at night, dude. Yeah, I, I probably wouldn't go 95 ES, because then we would see Immortal Sorceresses, and I'll tell you, that is a miserable duel, too. 2-2. Two, two. Oh, my God, Joby. Thanks for the update, dude. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's true, too. Yeah. It, it, it's it, That's a fair point. Audigius. I mean, it's a fair point. I think in that matchup, Doom was more aggressive, for sure. But he also typically has a, a distant style to him. Yeah, he was certainly more aggressive and, and hunting for name locks. He was a little slow on the name locks, which I think was probably his downfall in some of his losses so far. That's true too, James. That's true. That's true, too. Perhaps we would have to do something I vowed never to do, and that is limit IDR. Man, underrated getting in, dude, and taking out Max, making it 2-1, I believe. Now, this is a duel, boys. Typically, Sin v. Sin is not very exciting. But I say typically because, I mean, whenever Max and underrated are in these duels... These guys aren't lates, boys. These guys aren't lates. These guys get in and get aggressive. We see underrated getting in and pulling his world girl juck fuckery against Max. Literally no fucks given, man. Like, I didn't actually expect to see underrated doing a lot of whirls here. But the two wins that he's got have come from his whirlwind. A very interesting observation. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to lie, man. A very interesting observation. I did not expect that against a Max block. Uh, hybrid sin here. Max block in the sense he's he's chucking blade furies and traps. Vicious on both fronts. 
Did not expect this. Elite chained him and paid for it. One blizz to 600 life. Oof. God damn, dude. Yeah, that's true, James. I think I think that's a point. Let me think about it. Let me think about it. I appreciate that feedback. Yeah, dude. Underrated is an aggressive dueler, man. He is an aggressive dueler. I love watching this guy. Is he streaming? He isn't. Uh, he isn't Captain Morgan, is he? In uh, in the Discord, I don't think he is. I was gonna say I'd love to see it from his. Either standpoint here is sick. I love seeing Max duel too. Max always has these weird creative builds. Notice he's not. I notice he's not teleporting. Is he not teleport? Does he not have Enigma? Did he go fort? Did Max go fort? I haven't seen Max teleport once. Oh, there it is. There it is. Never mind. Never mind. I spoke too soon. I was like, I see him walking around. That would have been that would have been big brain play, dude. Oh man, a big hit, a life tap. Life tap didn't pull off much damage though. There, it, it didn't get him much life back. That was insane. He just like immediately, as soon as underrated comes in and starts whirling, boom, underrated dead, one hundred to zero. Yeah, the, the other the other point around that though is I think in the old LOD rule sets we had something similar where we allowed 95% ES sorceresses and we saw some pretty miserable oh that's lower res proc. Okay, thank you Max. Thank you Max. Max pointed that out in game. That wasn't life tap, it was lower res proc. Wow, that's nuts. Uh so he's he's using the uh he's using plague. Uh, and yeah, we actually saw Terrace take down an entire tournament once. It was uh, it was a Joby Sucks World Tour random tournament. Uh, Terrace took it down with a 95% ES Fire Sorceress. I'll tell you, it seemed a little unfair. It seemed a little unfair. Mainly because he would get to one life and it was like nearly impossible. Nearly impossible to kill him. Oh, Matt, Maddie won the first one. I think the second one or the third one, Terrace won. We had like three Joby Sucks World Tours. Maddie won one. I don't think Joby ever won one. I don't think Joby ever won. DFC, uh, TFC Priest won, won one of them. TFC Priest, Maddie, and Terrace. Yeah, Joby has never won a Joby Sucks World Tour. Oh, wait, you won against Harris in the finals? Am I misremembering this? Either way, I'll, I remember it was a miserable duel. That's what it was. Okay, yeah, Joby lost to... He made it to the finals, lost to TFC Priest. Dude, TFC is nasty. What are you talking about, Toshank? TFC is nasty. TFC was like one of the nastiest classic Zon players I've ever seen. I say that Toshank's gonna be like, nah, dude, I'm the I'm the nastiest the classic Zon player you've ever seen. But trust me, trust boys. Trust it was good. Yeah, best try bread in the business. Yeah. He was so good. He was so good. Yeah, truth be told, I, I haven't seen Marvel, Austin, and Paul duel nearly as much as I've wanted to. Uh, everybody's got good things to say about those guys. I've dueled against Marvel before. He's a savage. Uh, like, he's a savage. He reminds me of uh, Fino with his aggression. His constant chain-locking aggression will put anybody on the back of the... Like, put their back on the ropes. It's, it's insane. And if Austin... I've seen... I think I've dueled, dueled Austin before in LOD when I was a shittier dueler and always got my ass kicked by him. Like, there's... There's some people. I, I, I know these guys. I've, I've heard of them. I'm not sure about Paul, but uh, I would love to see these guys in the DFC. Oh, man! And there it is, dude. It's 3-2, I believe, in favor of underrated. God damn, boys. This is a duel. These exchanges are insane. Austin Neck with Soul. Okay, I've dueled him. Yeah, I've dueled him. In search of side match because nobody wants to duel me for my title. Everyone just goes AFK. They fucking scared, Jess. Can you blame them? Do, do Marvel or Austin play Poison Tribrid? That's a good question. 
That's a good question. They scared, dude. Shit, I'd be scared too. I'd be AFK. I'd be I'd be AFK. No, fuck, I wouldn't be AFK. I would take on Toshank because I've got nothing to lose. Like Toshank is obviously a better dueler than me. So if I win even a round against Toshank, I might as well have won the whole duel. I might as well have won the whole damn thing. I might actually, I would actually win a round and AFK then against Toshank. I'd be like, sorry, dude, I gotta take a shit and just, a I don't care if I was streaming or not. It would be AFK keeping that shit. Be like, we're gonna have to continue this at another time. Until then, I believe I'm more champion than you. And just AFK. AFK. <laughs> Yeah, TFC was poison. He was he he wasn't uh I think it was a fair amount of poison. He wasn't like over the top. I think it was like between 10 and 20k. So it was like heavy, but it wasn't like over the top. It wasn't like the 60k poison jabs that you see that you see some people rocking. It was actually a fair amount of poison. Like it it was pretty fair. It was like annoying. <laughs> SA worthy. Oh shit. Oh shit. Damn, dude. Was your brother no? Oh, exposed. Exposed. Exposed, bro. Oh shit. <laughs> Exposed. All right, boys. Uh, I'm gonna be particularly checking this this uh, tonight, or actually probably this week, maybe tomorrow. Maybe we can check it live tomorrow. Uh, I'm gonna be particularly checking the rule discussion channel and open to all feedback about current cold rule set or current rules in general surrounding the situation with elite and uh, elite and doom. I think it was just a duel that points out a good, you know, something interesting about the rule sets. We want to see aggressive duels, right? I, we understand sometimes you can be defensive and you have to be, but we want a rule set that encourages, that encourages players to be aggressive. At least one player. We don't want to find ourselves. Uh, and, and granted, I'm not, I'm not saying Doom was overly defensive. Not not saying that about him. I, I would I would go as far as to say, Elite was probably defensive. Maybe overly, but riding the line. All right, all right. I'll, I'll check it out. I'll check it out, Jess. I'll allow 10 into Cold Mastery. That's it. No more. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps that is what we do, because all of the Cold rule sets rely on a variable Cold Mastery. Like, on a Cold Mastery that could be stacked to the max, or it could not be. You know, it, it's so weird. Man, this is interesting. I believe it's still 3-2 in this Sin v. Sin matchup with Underrated versus Max. Both of these guys at about 80-85% life. This is nuts. I think this will be uh, in the rules discussion. I wasn't the only one arguing about 95 ES. Dingus thinks it can work with some other uh, sun changes. Some changes. Good stuff. Yeah, I'll, I'll be paying particular attention to that channel. Big hits from Max tying the score up there with Blade Fury. Oh my god, dude! I love seeing characters get absolutely smacked with Blade Fury. Like, there's just something in me about it with as a D2 player. You guys have seen it. Y'all have seen me grief pub games before. There's just something. Y'all, y'all have even seen me back in the days of LOD, just one tap Joby in L in low level dueling. And absolutely lose my shit. There's just something about a player getting clapped immediately by something that just feels good. It just feels good, man. It's 4-3 right now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that, Max. I've, I've been in and out. In and out mentally. My mind's still stuck in the Elite versus Doom match. I, I feel bad. I honestly feel bad about that match. Like, I'm not proud of it, boys. I'm not proud of it.
Yeah, that was insane. I just want to say, guys, cheers to you. Cheers to you. I know there's not a cheers button like there is on Twitch, and I want you guys to know that I appreciate you. I appreciate how hyped this chat is and how active you guys are being, uh, you know, in, in just conversing with me and being It makes my friggin' week, man. So cheers to all you guys. Cheers to you, Dong. Uh, I, I I wouldn't doubt it, honestly, Jess. The Druid is is pretty good right now. And then if you if you get a good player like yourself on a Druid, it really shows how busted a Druid is. But there's also certain players, like there's good Druids out there that don't chain lock people like like you and Go Gators do. Like Go Gators has improved a lot. I know we talk about Dirty being like most improved. Uh, and he probably is. I don't think anybody's going to take that title from Dirty. But there's certainly other players in the DFC that have improved eons beyond what they used to be. And I think Go Gators is one of those as well. Uh, it, the the level at which he was dueling Elite is insane, man. He was he was dueling on top tier pro level with nasty chain locks, nasty aggression and pressure, and insane decisions, dude. Like, that was that was nuts. And when you get a druid that can do that, it really points out how busted druids are, man. Yeah. Real aggro trapper that chases 24-7. That's my boy, dude. That's my boy. That's my boy, and cheers to that. Cheers to you, James. Fat Bubba, cheers to you. Dude, Z's been playing. I don't want to out him like this. I don't want. I don't want to out him like this because I know you guys are gonna have something to say about it. Boy's been playing Diablo Immortal. Yeah, yeah, Jess knows. Jess knows. Boy's been playing Diablo Immortal, dude. I mean, it's a fun game. I'm not gonna lie. It's a fun game. You don't have to pay. <laughs> you don't have to pay. I don't know how much he has paid. But he's playing, dude. And he's having fun. And he's having fun. That's what it's all about, dude. I, I actually enjoyed playing Immortal when I did. I just lost interest very quickly. Uh, I never actually got to the PvP part of it. Uh, and, and after seeing some feedback and, and seeing what happens... Uh, to, to some other content creators. I, I'm not too fired up about it. I fear Diablo 4 will be the same way. Uh, I, I got a whole opinion about that. We'll talk about it tomorrow. We'll talk about it tomorrow. We'll actually review some Diablo 4 shit tomorrow. Oh, man. Holy shit. Uh, dude, uh, Underrated just narrowly escaped death there. He's at a sliver of life trying to finish up on Max. Like, trying to get some chip damage in here against Max. But he is dangerously low, dude. One Blade Fury or possibly even a trap Max could Max could end this with. <laughs> yeah, th there could be. It, it could certainly be something that we clip. Uh, I would uh, put it this way. We'll review it tomorrow. And I'll probably do it on Twitch. But we'll certainly clip some things. We'll certainly clip some things. And and people will know my opinion about Diablo 4. I think I know enough about Diablo 4. There's, there's certain things I need to verify. And maybe people can help me with that tomorrow. But to give you a little bit of a spoiler... I think the game's going to be shit. I'm 90% that it's going to be shit. They're going to fuck it up. Like they already have. And boom, dude. Good duels. Max actually gets there, man. 5-3 versus underrated with this very weird sand. Blade Fury and Trap Hybrid. All right. Max, let's take a peek at this guy. Let's take a peek at this guy. What is this guy wearing? What is this sin? He's he's wearing plague, man. Mad props for using the new rune word. I think that's cool. Phoenix Phoenix shield for that mad enhanced damage. 399 roll on it too. Enigma we saw. High Lords, Griffin's Eye. Caster rings. 
interesting. Interesting choice. Oh, and he's got Clegs for the slow. Technically allowed in the DFC rule set. Uh, you can slow up to, I believe, 35% in the DFC rule set. That was a big fuck you to Sins back in the day. Uh, you know, it was big fuck you to Sins that certain characters at the top currently can't utilize. But other ones down in the mid-tier can. Paladins, Barbs, Sins can use utilize it against other Sins. Uh, very good roll call right there on behalf of Max. We also put it out there so that uh, uh, Paladins could use uh, Astreons. 3-2 Doom? No way! No way! Wow! I, I'm more... I'm more happy hearing that update from you, Joby. And just updates along the way than I... It was, it's so much less stressful. I gotta say, I rooted for the underdog and we got there. But wow, what a stressful duel. Congrats, Doom. That's a big win, dude. That's a big win. That's a big win. And honestly, I will say this. Congrats to Vamp. I know that's a hard matchup and I know the rule set might not be perfect. I, I, I understand that and I'm going to look into it. Props to Vamp. Props to Vamp. Props to Doom. I, I, I love you both. I, I, you, that it was. I wish that duel wasn't as stressful to watch. I was literally losing my fucking mind watching that duel. I love you both, but I can. I'll. I hope to never have to watch you two duel ever again in my life. Like my it, my life would be so much better. If I never have to see that again. But I, I am happy to see that. Uh, happy to see the Doom one. I know that's a tough matchup. Very tough opponent. Very frustrating opponent. But right back at you, man. I know how you are in that cold sword. You're also very frustrating to duel against because you're savage on it. Uh, and dude, congrats, man. That is that's heavy. That's heavy. I found a three LS, three mind blasts, one BS runic talent on ladder. TZ Kyle, sick, man. Yeah, that's really good. Dude, sick setup. I know I was kind of talking uh, while Max is showing this off, but this is this is insane. Uh, so he says, uh, so his setup here, he's showing off the the Blade Fury. I'm actually very interested in this. He maxed out Blade Fury synergies before maxing out. Oh no, no, I'm sorry, Blade Shield synergies. Uh, didn't max out Blade Shield. Didn't anticipate his opponent getting very close. It doesn't look like. Oh, interesting. Fully maxed traps. What does the Shadow Disciplines tab look like? And the Martial Arts? Like, hold on, let me get a quick... I know you probably showed that off already. F Weapon. Oh, wow. I didn't even notice that, boys. Look at this. That's an F Plague. One point into each Shadow Discipline interesting build dude he he also dumps a lot into uh dexterity in this build so the reason he uses an f plague with no repair this thing doesn't repair itself the reason he uses an f plague is because blade fury bases that damage off from your main weapon damage uh same with uh blade shield yeah, look at that, dude. Heavy into dexterity. There's 364 dexterity on this. Oh my god, dude. This is insane. It's, that That's just nuts. Very creative build. I would expect no less from Max, dude. Max is one of the most savage people to ever go up against in Sin v. Sin because you never know what he's bringing to the table. And, like, he will punish you in so many different ways. Yeah, and he maxed out his, his lightning resistance and... His poison resistance in this build. Very, very good. Very good call. He came ready for battle with this, man. But it's still very close. Underrated actually was a savage here, too. Blade Fury also does not reduce durability. So you can use F weapons. Yeah. Yeah. Good point, dude. Good point. So, so yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, I don't think I got to that. Like, it doesn't take durability. Thank you for catching me. Putting me back on track. Blade Fury, Blade Shield do not diminish your weapon's durability. So you can have these ethereal weapons and they'll do massive amounts of damage. Uh, but he still does have a uh, regular plague in case he decides to be a Whirl Girl. I, I gotta say, man, I absolutely love this build. I, I love seeing the creativity from Max. 
Snack v Blizz. Don't think anyone takes that matchup serious. Yeah. Yep. Not sure about Blade Shield. Yeah, just don't whirlwind with it. Exactly. Exactly. Does it? I don't think it does. I, I don't think it does, Xander. Hold on. We, we got to Google this now. Now I'm very curious. I mean, I'm extremely curious. Hold on now. Y'all might get a black screen here. Don't worry about it. We're, we going to Google this shit, boys. Does blade shield cost durability? Durability. Whoops, I can't even spell. Y'all have cheersed me out today. Blade shield damages weapon durability when it activates against attackers. There is no limit on how often it can a hit can be delivered. This skill does not trigger on striking spells. It does, however, trigger on attack spells. You'll learn something every day. I, I Haven't I said this on stream before? Whenever we watch Max Duel, or at least I, I speak for myself, whenever I watch Max Duel, I end up learning something. Right here, this was the lesson today. Sins are very unique, dude. It, it took me six hours with Dazer to fully understand, to understand his build and all of the decisions that he makes. Wow, dude, okay. I guess that settles it, though. I'm down, Crafted. I'm popping in now, bro. I'm popping in now. GG, Max, thank you so much for showing that off, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, my dude. All right, we're going to pop in to Crafted. Crafted versus, boys. Crafted versus... Captain Morgan. This is Drew v. Drew. This is going to be an interesting duel, man. Typically, these are more distance duels. You're really waiting for your opponent to fuck up. Right? Like, you're waiting for your opponent to fuck up. Stomping has to be opportunistic in, in DVD. Now, granted, the matchup did just say Drew v. Drew. Usually, I specify, but this time I didn't. So, one of these guys could have gone fire, too. Oh, these guys... Okay, never mind. These guys agreed to go Sin v. Drew. Okay, that's that's actually better, uh, honestly. Uh, because I'm not going to lie. I'm happy you guys did that. Because this was the matchup in the entire card that I felt worst about. Because it had to be Drew v. Drew. And I was like, well, they're not always the most entertaining duels to watch. But I'm just going to keep it basic and say Drew v. Drew. Maybe one of them will go Shaman... The other will go windy, and we'll get an insane duel. Uh, you know, you never know. What's up, Dio? Yeah. Not in this rule set, Toshank. Not in this rule set. Not in DFC. If you want to use a F weapon that doesn't have rep, go for it. <laughs> Fucking go for it. We rarely ever see it. And in the builds that we did see it... Is in Max's build? Great. This is amazing. But truth be told, I'm surprised we haven't seen more barbs just make beat like ethereal beast and grief. Ju and just spend resources on ethereal beast, ethereal grief. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. I hope Stadium PK does that in his title match. I hope he I hope he has noticed what is going on. I hope he's noticed the rules and he said, you know what? I'm gonna make an ethereal beast and go up against Toshank, because that shit would be some next level. Oh yeah, it's the poor people hating, dude. It's the people that don't want to bust an axe on someone's ass. They don't want to see an axe get busted on someone's ass who's going to be complaining and they don't want to have to pay for another one or trade for another one. PVP has always been at the highest level, a rich player's game. That being the case, why would we ban F, we F weapons that don't repair? Just go get another one. With druids and necros being practically untouchable classes these days. 
for you know, I say practically because of course, you know, sins can take them out. I know I know there's possibility, but just matchup wise, they have better matchups versus everything. Those guys are not abusing that rule. They never. You're never gonna see it. So why not allow it for the people that dare to be different and dare to bust an axe over someone's ass? I say let's see it, man. We could see it in Stadium versus Toshank. I'd be curious to see if Stadium's like, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go get a beast and make it in an ethereal berserker axe. In fact, I'm gonna make two of them in case I bust it on Jess's face. I'm gonna make two of them. Can't kill what you can't hit, Bond. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh, what a night it's gonna be. What a night it's gonna be. Wow, I, I got a ton of messages already. A ton of ats in the channel. Oh, I can't wait to tackle this channel tomorrow. We might even do it live. Oh, shit, Jess. That's a lot of shit, dude. That's a lot of shit. Flu, new job, three hours of sleep. I feel like you're just setting up an excuse to lose, man. I feel like you're just setting up an excuse to lose, and I'm not fucking hearing that shit. All right? I want to see some... I want to see some ass beaten when we watch you duel. <laughs> Nobody is beating me on Sid. It's impossible. Fuck yeah, dude. That's... That's the Jess. That's the Jess I need to come out tonight. I hope we get to see Chu versus Jess tonight. I, I think Chu might actually still be out of town. That or he gets back late tonight. I can't remember. By the way, we're still in search of a duel for this week for Chu. But I couldn't make... I couldn't move anything around. So if any top tier GG players either lose tonight and want another bite at the apple. Or just haven't joined this week. We need a we need a top ranked fighter, unfortunately, because Chu is so highly ranked. You can't just throw a rando against Chu. Yeah, Chu's still in Cuba, okay. Alright, yeah, yeah, yeah. No no worries. No worries. I figured that was the case. That's why he couldn't sign up. It was like weird internet. He could he couldn't sign up, I guess, to get into this week's event. And I said I would get him on the card, and I totally forgot. Whatever. Ah, I fucked up. I fucked up. So also we can watch this from Captain Morgan's standpoint, dude. Let me let me pop into that and see how this is going. Captain Morgan. Also, jamming on the sin. I get a black screen. What what is this? This ain't this ain't incredible fight. Incredible standpoint. The footage here is unspeakable. It's unseeable. It's too good for anyone to witness. Captain Morgan's skills are blinding. He's blindingly good. You noticed that too, Audigius? That was one of the first things I noticed when I first downloaded D2R. I, I played a Sin on launch. I said that exact same thing. I said that exact same thing, and I love it. I absolutely love it. Big hits there. Big hits, but uh, not a lot, not a lot to, to show for it. Uh, Captain Morgan got in close, did some whirling, which I believe that's that's kind of what you want to do in the Druid matchup. Like, if you're a Sin, the traps are good, and you can certainly finish your opponent with traps, with Mind Blast, with all of this. But a lot of your damage is going to come from Whirlwind, and especially you want to Whirlwind when your opponent has all of these pets up because you can actually leech some life back. So if you get hit by these Nados, you, you can actually get some life back. It, it can be beneficial to get up close and personal. And uh, Crafted is doing what he needs to do.
kind of keeping the distance and trying to lead the sin into these natos. You're not, you're typically not going to stomp any whirlwind character as a druid, usually. But you're also, you're certainly not going to stomp a sin with mind blast and five traps up. That's just going to go horribly. Yeah, yeah, it, it, dude, it sounds so cool, man. It sounds so cool. Nice stomp there, though. If you do stomp, you want to have it be very opportunistic and very unexpected on behalf of the sin. We're seeing, like, a little bit of lag here. Yeah, it, and it just drops quality, too. That's not on you guys' end. That's on mine. I promise it's not my internet connection. I learned yesterday that dueling a druid with a sin is not easy. Yeah, it's definitely not. Pubs, pubs didn't get me ready for DFC with the new sin. Nah, dude. Pubs are so different. Like, that's how I used to have to go feel good about myself, was to go into a pub and just randomly kill people. Bam, there it is, man. And Captain Morgan slain by Crafted in round one. I like how Crafted was very aggressive there when he noticed he had his opponent in trouble. I think that's what a lot of players could learn from that right there. Uh, very aggressive. Not afraid to take risks when his opponent was in trouble. Gotta say, I love the name, too. I actually have the name Drew on LOD. D-R-U. Back in the days where only one person could have a name. I still have that one. Yeah, Root is a savage druid, too. Root is a savage druid. Root is one of those druids that, like, uh... If you come at Root with a weird build, right? Let's say you're Max. You come at him with a weird build, like a Blade Fury Sin. You might actually confuse him for a couple of rounds. Like, you might actually confuse Root for a couple of rounds. And you might get a couple of wins against him. But he's the type of player that doesn't let that rock him. Like, he, he's the type of player that usually when you get beat by these weird builds, some players, myself included, will just mentally quit. They'll be like, ah, fuck it. I guess I don't know how to duel this one. I guess I got no answers to this. Root, like, turns a corner and he'll study it. I've heard his thought process, too. And he's just like, oh, I'm going to try this. I'm going to do this. And then suddenly it's like, okay, now he's got you. Now he's got you. Yeah, he adapts very quickly. Bick, what's up, dude? Now I know I have to, yeah. On the, on the, as a sin, yeah. Yeah, as a sin, you gotta, like, you gotta turn up the heat, I think. Like, whirlwinding and having, like, open wounds, that's certainly what you want to do. I would stack up the open wounds and just whirlwind the shit out of the druid. Yeah, man, we've been doing DFC events for the last few weeks on YouTube. I haven't completely given up on Twitch. I might actually do a bonus stream tomorrow. It's, it's on my mind. It's, it's something I'm looking forward to, actually. Uh, I haven't been on there in a couple weeks. Uh, YouTube is definitely is cool. I like it. The discoverability is better. I gotta make a thumbnail every time before I go live though, but I actually enjoy it. So, yeah, it's it's definitely different. Been trying it out on on this channel. But yeah, I think open wounds though in this matchup is the way to go. Not necessarily, Stefan. Not necessarily. Uh, I was just very curious to try out YouTube. And I was watching other streamers switch to YouTube. Uh, and I was always curious about the latency. But it's actually not as bad as I thought it was. Um, the discoverability is better. And particularly with this channel, the big thing is I'm trying to... Uh, I'm, I'm trying to, like, basically monetize a second channel where I can post a whole bunch of shit about D2 that might may, may or may not be as polished as something I would put on the main channel. Because I feel like the main channel is at that point. Everything's got to be polished. Like, everything's got to be... And I want to just be able to put out, like, quick things that are insane or detailed things that only select few of us care about. So, like, one good way to get, like to work your way up to the specifications on YouTube of getting a channel monetized. You got to have like a certain amount of watch time. So I'm like, all right, fuck it. We'll just stream. We'll just, we'll just stream on this channel that that'll get, that'll get watch time. <laughs> that was my thought. Hopefully they don't get pissed at me. And they're like, you took the, the easy way out. We'll see though. 
No, but that's what I want to do with this channel. Like, I feel like the other channel, I love it. It's like, I love that channel. But it's to the point now where, like, I feel like I have to outdo myself every time. And it's, like, stressful. And sometimes I just want to put very detailed stuff out. So, like, I'm going to do it on this channel. Reason being is because, like, y'all notice those paid promotions that I do every once in a while? Those are very, very uh, reliant. Like, how much you get from those is very, very reliant on how much the client thinks you're going to get for views on any given video. So, like, that's why I have to put my all into all of those videos. I have to make it worth people's time watching it. I have to make it, like, the best fucking D2 video that anyone could possibly watch that week. Like, that's what I have to... I put so much thought into it. And sometimes I'm just like, I want to do a detailed version of... Or a detailed video about specifics on an assassin. But no one gives a shit. But this is the channel for people like us that certainly give a shit. And I certainly won't care about views. <laughs> that's, that's, if you want the real long detailed answer, that's it. Dude, wow, man. Actually crafted getting in here, getting aggressive now. And uh, uh, his opponent, Captain Morgan here, is actually in a lot of trouble. Now, this is, this is after the rules changed here for the Druid. The Druid's block got capped a bit in the current DFC rule set. Because Druids are a top tier character, they perform far better than most other classes. So when that happens, oh my god, and he didn't even, he just pointed out his block as a, as a, as a fuck you. He's like, he just pointed out his block as a fuck you there. Didn't even take advantage, and this is, this is a great point. He has, he's got 13 block. Like, he don't even care, man. Like, he knows what's up. Even more of a point, Druid's block should be capped, right? He's doing phenomenally well in this matchup, and he has 13 block. Uh, as a druid. Oh, no doubt, dude. No doubt. No doubt. They, they would always get a view from me, too, James, honestly. Risen days are good whirlwind sins. Yeah, 100%. We, we saw Dazer rip up some druids, dude. When you watch Dazer go up against a druid, especially if a druid had, like, not a lot of block, it would look unfair. Like, I'm actually very impressed by Crafted and his ability. Oh my god, he nailed him with a NATO there, but could have very easily Hurricane PK'd him there, too. Had him very low. Crafted, pulling it out, man. Showing what's up on this Druid. This is actually a very tough matchup for a Druid. Uh, much like I was talking about with Dazer, we saw him tear up some very notable Druids. Dio, even. Like, you know, it's, it's a tough match because... When you get a good whirlwind sin, man, that's going to pressure you and is going to chain lock you. And it's going to make it so you can't even take a breath in this duel, dude. They're going to cut you open. They're going to venom you. They're going to trap you, mind blast you. It's like you never have breathing room. Uh, and Dazer is one of those players, dude. He'll definitely do that to you. <laughs> I thought maybe you fell in the TwitchCon foam pit as well and decided to switch platforms. <laughs> no, I didn't go. I didn't go to the TwitchCon, man. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if they'd let me in. I'm not cool enough. Yeah, dude, I definitely uh, I made it so that in the Discord though, Stefan, it would post into the live channel whenever I put something on Cooley Live. But the thing that I don't like, the biggest thing that I don't like about streaming on uh, YouTube is that so far. It's integration with Discord in recent history has been nerfed. So, like, it's really hard to tell channel members on Discord, like, channel members on YouTube via Discord. It's very hard for me to tell that. I haven't quite figured that out yet. And it's also impossible to differentiate when you go live versus when you posted a video. Impossible. With, with the API. It's impossible. I'm sure there might be a creative way to do it, but I haven't figured that out yet. Yeah, YouTube doesn't like Discord. Yeah, 100%. It's so weird. I'm not sure why. Honestly, don't. Oh, yes, you're right, Demented. Thank you for the correction. Thank you for the correction. Yeah, you're 100% right. Dio did beat Dazer. He went fire. He went fire. But even then, it was very tough. Like, that Whirlwind Man is savage. Yeah, you're right. He did, he did beat Dazer. He switched to a Fire Druid, which is very, very tough for an Assassin. We use many bots for music, and every few months, YouTube shuts them down. Yeah, it's ridiculous, man. 
Like, it's ridiculous. The API calls and shit like that. YouTube, for whatever reason, doesn't like Discord. And I, I got to tell you this, man. I know Discord is all Google-owned and stuff, and they, they've got their... They've got... I, I hope they don't get to a point where YouTube has its head so far up its ass thinking it's like... You know, I mean, it currently is the best platform in a lot of ways. But, like, you got to start working with Discord, man. You got to make that... You got to make that a thing. Wow, man. I cannot believe what we're seeing here. We're seeing... Uh, Captain Morgan get these vicious whirlwinds in, but he's unable to land much against Crafted because Crafted has got these pets and he's switching to Bear now. He's switching to Bear. I love this, dude. Oh, no, he's going back to Wolves. He's going back to Wolves. He, he, he accidentally casted Bear. Those Wolves are keeping him alive when uh, Captain Morgan goes in for these whirlwinds. They're eating up these whirlwinds for him. So he doesn't need block. That's actually I'm I'm impressed. Yeah, yeah, Druid can aggro now. The the sin is so low. The sin is so like practically hurricane PK. There it is, man. He's getting in. Maybe I should try this thing they call fire. I'm surprised we haven't seen you do it yet, Rude, honestly. Yeah, he's going for the name lock. Got the shadow that time, and wow, man, Captain Morgan whirlwinding up. I actually like that. Recognizing the spot he was in, about to get stomped, whirlwinding up, hoping to rep back enough life to not get Hurricane PK'd. There it is. I think that might have actually been a Hurricane PK. Damn, GG's, man. Hi, guys. I am the champ. I don't, you know what I'm so happy about with Jess is I don't think I've ever seen anybody as fired up to be the champ of the DFC. Jess will let you know it randomly on stream. He'll pop into the chat and he'll be like, hey, what's up champ here? We were doing, dude, I just want to let you know, we were doing fucking terror zone runs the other day. We were leveling in the terror zone. Jess pops into the game says something he's like oh no duels here okay champ out <laughs> champ out ggs boys looks like crafted won that let me actually mark these down so i just want to confirm uh the elite duel that went to that went to um That went to Doom. Did Doom win that? Ten. God damn. Wow, man. Crafted takes this one though. That was a that was pretty dominant, honestly, on a druid that didn't have any block, man. Holy shit. Holy shit. Druid, Windy. And he just went against Captain Morgan. Oh shoot, who is Captain Morgan? I shouldn't I probably shouldn't stream all of this. Let me let me fix this. Let me get this on. Let me get this on the other screen. Let me grab this. Get it on the other screen. There we go. Crafted wins versus Cap Morgan. I gotta find out who he is though. Who, who's who's Captain Morgan? Who is he in Discord? What? Oh, I'm all confused. Now I'm all confused. Now I got. Now I got to. Now I got to look at this. Captain Morgan. Do I not have him? Did I not add him? I got to add him onto the roster. All right. I guess I can't add that one. I got to figure that out later. I won't make you guys sit through that. Bottom. Is he? Yeah, I don't see it. I'll see it. I thought I added him on there. I'll, I'll have to make it. Uh, I'll have to get him on there. All right. 
Cooley, need to get more drunk. Cheers, bro. Cheers to you, Dong. Yo, Cooley, you ever going to run LOD duels again sometime? I wouldn't be opposed to it, honestly. I wouldn't be opposed to it. I'd be up for a, a good old LOD duel. LOD tournament, even. We actually did it randomly, even after uh, D2R launched. Oh, so y'all were doing an FT3 and then swapping out? Okay, so that part of the duel is done. Now y'all doing something else. Okay, so now you're doing Sin v. Drew. Now Crafted is on the Sin. Don't remember, to be honest. That's uh, my only law lose on Sin is in 10 years. It was up 2-0. Said a bad word on Twitch. Got banned. Blackout drunk, etc. Lost. No shit. Captain never really plays that Sin. Okay, but yeah, Captain Captain signed up on a Druid, so I'd be very interested to see how he does on a Druid here. Uh, can he do better than Crafted's 3-0 win in that scenario, dude? Is, is he going to have a better record here? He's going to have to tie it up. If uh, basically how this is going to work, whereas these guys have chosen to do two FT3s, Crafted versus Captain Morgan. If Crafted gets any win on the Sin... He, he technically wins, because his record is better. They were doing a mirror fight, but I think both of them agreed that it's kind of a shit duel, which I, I also kind of agree. I didn't feel great about putting that one together underrated. Yeah, I think they both kind of knew that it was a shit duel, Drew v. Drew. Like, it, it was one of those duels on the card that just had to happen. Like, sometimes we run into that. He says, I like DVD. Nobody does. <laughs> yeah, usually, usually it's a duel where both players, none of them stomp. Unless it's very unexpected or opportunistic. None of them stomp. And they just kind of chuck NATOs and wait for the other one to run into them. It, it's kind of a shitty duel to watch. Uh, usually, when you when you have very, two very good druids going up against each other, that's that's really what you'll see. That's what it'll come down to. DVD is for real druids. It says root, and root is a real druid. So I, I won't hesitate to put root in a DVD matchup someday, and maybe all of us can see how it's done. Captain mains the druid, yeah. All right, I, I'm I'm a while we watch this, I'm gonna see if I can add him in Discord here. Uh, perhaps that's where I fucked up that I didn't add him. That I didn't give him the DFC tag. Greetings. I'm not exactly sure who Captain Morgan is in Discord. Uh, hold on. In search of Hello. Captain Morgan Discord name. Oh my god. Thank you, Joby. Got your message, bro. Necro can't aggro. Yeah, I, I can also see it. Like, it, uh, I got your message too, Bic. Like, I completely agree with you. Like, that was the hardest duel ever to call. Like, I'm telling you, something's fucked up. I don't ever want to be in that situation again. I actually appreciate you sending that message, though. Yeah, Max also brought up a rule about those sins because he has like some sort of non-traditional sin. Here's the slippery slope I don't want to get into though. Something that immediately pops into my mind. So Max brought up uh, the Max block rule surrounding non-traditional sins. I like it. But if I learned anything from watching Dazer and learning about his build, it's that trap sins now, hybrid trap sins can do a lot of shit. Like you, you have a lot of different avenues you could go as a hybrid traps in. 
because now all you need is 60 skill points to completely max out your lightning century damage. So it leaves 40 skill points for most sins to mess with in weird creative ways, which is cool. But at the end of the day, you're still a vicious trapper when you want to be. So it's like, that's an odd one. That's an odd one. Yeah, they were super good. I think they were super good in general. But man, they're they're certainly going to complicate some rule sets too. The the block surrounding sins. The the reason we put the rule in place is because we don't want to see chin, sins sort of cheese Amazons with max block, which which you know. But I guess if that's what we're worried about, perhaps we just make a rule against uh, you know, maybe against barbs and, and Amazons. Like if you're maybe we have to do an official tier list of dueling characters for once and just say like if you have a B or C tier class you can't max block them as a sin if you want to max block a druid or a necro go all day go for it but yeah that we'll have to we'll have to do some serious rule oh my god and here it is man look at that crafted showing how it's done and there it is like he gets he gets round one. He says, do one more. Yeah, basically it's finished. He's completely right. But he's up for doing one more. He doesn't want to go out like that. He wants to, uh... Wants to give him another opportunity for a win. Doesn't want to just go out on one win like that. That's kind of cool of him to do, man. That's kind of cool of him to do. Also, Dio ready to go. Dio ready to go. Chris ready to go. Whereas this duel is done, Crafted does take it. Crafted does take it. Very nicely done. Very nice display of skill on both a Sin and a Druid there. We'll have to get Captain Morgan officially on the roster. I think I either missed it or I'm miss seeing him. Like I'm miss I I can't I can't see him in the Discord. Or I've mislabeled him or something in uh in the sheet. Either way, let's pop into Dio versus uh Chris, I believe, actually. This is a this is gonna be an interesting duel. This is classic hybrid. Classic hybrid Zon versus Druid. I actually want to pop into Chris. Uh, who might be watching my stream. Yeah, he's watching my stream. So we're going to get an echo. We're going to get an infinite mirror and an echo. Yeah, like... I am actually pretty pumped to see this... Uh, to see this Zon, man. Look at this. Look at this infinite mirror here, boys. Y'all didn't sign up for it. But we're seeing... We're seeing the Bernard Tos Tarski paradox right here. This will go on infinitely until until Chris switches, uh, switches screens. There's a time limit on this version of infinity. It breaks my mind to think about it, really. Yeah, uh, there unfortunately has to be, though, JDN. There unfortunately has to be. But, yeah, at the start of D2R, basically what we did was uh, we we almost just threw out all the rules. But then we noticed immediately that you can't do that either. It, it was just it was just weird, man. What happened? I thought these guys were going at it. Dio stopped streaming. We can't even we can't even get off my ugly face. We can't even get off the infinite mirror effect if we watch. Uh, we watch Chris's stream. What the hell's going on? What the hell's going on, boys? If only the game balanced itself, right? God, for Christ's sake. I, I loved the feedback that we got. Did you guys see the feedback that we got from Blizzard when they addressed Cold Mastery? They were like, Cold Mastery working as intended. No changes needed. I wonder if anybody on that team... Like anybody, even just one person. I wonder if there's just one person that's like, you know, maybe we fucked up. Like there's a possibility, perhaps we fucked up. Like just somebody on the Diablo team over there, the Diablo 2 resurrected team, just one of them. I would have a lot more faith in that team if at least one of them on the team was like, yeah, 
we fucked up with cold mastery. We 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 didn't know what we were doing. Sunder charms working as intended with cold mastery, as intended. And you know, I feel like they're they pussyfoot around making any changes that in any way affect PVP. Which I get it. There's a lot of there's a lot of toxic dudes out there who have who are certainly going to share their opinion with you. But they just got to admit they fucked up with cold mastery and just fix it. Just fix Cold Mastery. You want to fix Sunder Charms to the point where they're not busted and absolutely breaking a certain build early on in ladder and, and permanently, really? I still run a Cold Sorceress. Why? Because it's busted and I no longer need Infinity. Busted. That's the only class it seriously breaks is the Cold Sorceress. It helps other classes as intended. It absolutely breaks the Cold Sorceress because of Cold Mastery. Make it work differently. PvP players will thank you. You'll fix the game, PVM said. Easy fix. I've always been curious what would happen if no rules. Uh, yeah, basically you would still have you, you would still have the same setup, but you would have a necro bone prisoning everybody, lating across the map, overly defensive play, and just spamming shit. Like it would still look the same. You would just have a necro bone prisoning more, and like no, uh, no no class would suddenly rise to the top because there was no rules. The necro would just dominate everything, and they would overstack. You couldn't kill them with a cold sorceress. Uh, like a druid would still pose a threat for it, but a druid it, like it would still be the same thing, except duels would be way more miserable. No classes, no other classes would have a shot. Sins wouldn't have a, well, Sins probably would have a shot, but it would still be the same top three classes. Necro, Druid, Sin. All of the rules are basically for the other classes. The classes that aren't good. Like, in D2R anyway. Barb, Paladin, Zahn, Sorceress. They're good, but they're just not Druid Necro Sin good. Uh, yeah, they would suck if Decrepify was allowed, if, like, Unlimited Slow, like, it, it would... It, Paladins are just ass with no rules. Paladins are ass. You can beat Sorceresses, because you can over-sorb, you can over-stack, you can... You know, all el elemental characters are trash. They still are. Even with all of these rules, there, there's still very few of them rising to the top. Doom being the closest one on a cold sorceress. Oh, sick. Thank you, Dio. I, I noticed the stream shut down for a sec there. I, I was wondering what happened. All right, yeah, we'll, we'll pop into that, dude. We'll pop into it. Oh, this is my screen. Let me get, uh, let me get set up here. Boom. There we are. There we are. Uh, a little bit of pixelation here. That's not you guys. That's me. That's me. Uh, Chris's screen still looks like it's me. Yeah. Uh, he's sharing the wrong screen, boys. Chris is not sharing his Diablo 2 screen. He's sharing my stream. In case you needed another place to watch that, uh, you can just watch Chris's stream in the Discord. And he'll show you a slightly delayed version of it. Yeah, I mean, that's true, too. It's literally the opposite. You don't see Bone Necros. You see very few Wind Druids, very few World Girls. They don't, yeah. I like that it's, uh, you know, very much so the opposite. Uh, that, you know, it's a completely different world. But uh, there's just certain things that they could do that would be good for PvP and PvM. And the first, number one thing, fix Cold Mastery. It's, it's single-handedly the best thing they could do. Fix Cold Mastery. Make it work like the other Masteries. What happened? Dio out again. What's, that? What's going on with Dio? D 
Theo's got this Zahn thing down. Yeah, even with 60 block, even with the new block rules. Damn, Zahn dodge avoid evade is good. Watching it get hit by Nados and nothing happens. Yeah. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah, that's true. Sork, Pally, Zahn, PVM meta, 100%. But in, in PvP, they're at the... I wouldn't say at the bottom, because that's reserved for the Paladin. But most of them are pretty low. I think Dio's, uh, Dio's client crashed. I think that's what happened. We back to it. I think he's loading back up again. It's 3-0. Okay, thank you. Oh, swapping to EU. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. So that was on America. I get it. It all makes sense now. It all makes sense now. Every single piece of it. I'm following you. So Dio versus Chris. Chris is on Europe. Uh, so Chris is going to have to go 3-0 here. Chris is going to have to go 3-0. I think he can do it, but it's going to be tight. I think he can do it, but it's going to be tight. Just getting some scores in on the Arena GL website. Now that I've noticed that I've lost Captain Morgan's name... I didn't properly sign him up. I have I'm delayed. It set me back. I can't even think straight. But crafted one that one. Root versus Jammy Jams. They already did that one. I think Root won that. Root on that real doo doo man versus the Sin. Tough matchup. But gets there. Was that 5-0? Dirty one versus Riz potentially tonight too, man. Oof. Chris fix stream. Okay, GG. 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 He certainly did. All right, I'm actually happy about that because I really want to see this from a nice, nice classic hybrid Zon. I'm actually pumped. Actually pumped about this. All right, so he's got SS. He's got the works, dude. He's got SS, Faith, probably Fortitude. Look at him doing some shift click swapping. This guy's got it. Yep, Fortitude. He's got 220 stat knockback gloves. Wow, look at this gear, man. That is some classic hybrid Zon stuff right there. That was a uh, 120-45 helm. 30 faster run walk on it. Wow. Decked out Zahn, man. Now, back in the days, this thing, this thing was a beast. It was actually very hard on LOD. You had to be you had to be quite the player to take on a Zahn like this. This is very juicy, man. This is a beer jar. What, what do you mean? You just... Just need switch on mouse. Yeah, well, back in the day, you could you could weapon swap and desync with this guy. CF. Yeah. Yep. Oh my god. Back in the day, this this character was so good, man. If if you ever went up against TFC Priest on LOD, you will know this character is savage. Like a a truly well built hybrid Zon classic, man. Even if you don't have uh, even if you don't have the, um, oh my god, it's immune to cold and physical. Neither one of these guys can kill it. Oh my god. Clearing the moor is hard for us PvP players. It can be hard sometimes. I think they got, I think they got it. He's gonna, he's eventually gonna work him down. I think he does just enough damage. Like magic or elemental. Yeah, you got him. Good hit PvP is not equal to good hit PvM. It's, it's fact, dude. They're two different worlds. They're they're really two different worlds. Um Yeah, I certainly think there's skills also. Here's another fact. I think there's skills that transfer easily between both. Like a good PvP player could 
be a very good PVM player, and vice versa. A PVM player could be a very good PvP player if they make the right adjustments. Their skills, uh, good players on both sides, your skills will transfer very easily. And you can see that when Llama stepped into PvP, started tearing it up, dude. He's got some savage PVM skills. Reaction time like no one else. Yeah, I think, I think in one way they transfer a little easier. I think PvP players have an easier time transferring into PvM because, hey, they've already done it. Like, not all PvMers have PvP'd, but all PvPers have PvM'd. Yeah, and, and it boils down to that. How well do you know the game and the mechanics? Yep, hammered in, wind druid. Hell, I mean, on just about every character, really. Sin. Nice hits there. That was actually a very good exchange in favor of Chris. He actually did a lot of damage. This this server might really make a difference for him. If he goes 3-0 here, there's going to have to be a sudden vi sudden death victory uh, on behalf of one player because it's not a title match. And if the dice just happens to roll on EU, that could be very good for Chris. Yeah, they, I think they certainly do, Dong, for sure. Uh, no, there's not a strafe, man. He can certainly strafe. He can certainly strafe. Dio choosing. Oh my god, and Chris takes it. I thought he might have I thought Dio might have been able to turn the corner there. Uh, he was actually getting in some savage damage, man. Whew. That was a close one. But uh you notice what Dio did there. I'm not sure if he. I'm not sure if this was purposeful or not. But what happened was. In that last exchange, he didn't have any pets. And I'm wondering if he's doing that to alleviate some of the life leech that Chris could get off from hitting his pets. If he's purposely doing it. Because that is one of the big saving graces for a Zahn versus a Druid. Is when you have a fully stacked Druid that comes in with a whole full zoo of pets... And you blow them up with like a lightning, uh, lightning fury, or if you hit them with, um, you know, like strafe or something like that, you're actually leeching a lot of life back. You're leeching a lot of life back, man. Yeah, to say you got to respect to say, man, he's a savage. Yeah, classic hybrid. Cla like I call classic hybrid ones that like zons that don't teleport, man. Like I feel like all the zons teleport these days. So you have these, you have these like neo. Zons that teleport and the classic ones are the ones that walk that uh that don't teleport because there's a lot of zons that that uh that do these days so like a classic what you would expect to see in an lod zon is what i call the classic hybrid But ever since uh, ever since CJ started doing the tellies on man, a lot of people followed suit there. A lot of people were teleporting on their Amazons. Nice shots there from Chris. Good evasiveness. Yeah, I, I would say a good zon. It actually takes it takes skill on a zon, man. Because when you get a druid like this, like Dio, who is a very serious druid man who can stomp like this. It takes a lot of skill to be able to dodge these NATOs and remain offensive. You have to, you know, those jabs aren't going to seek out your opponent. You have to aim them, dude. You have to aim them. You have to get some good shots in. Uh, you have to be deliberate in your attacks and all of these exchanges. And look at this. Yep. Leeching some life back there off from those pets is Chris. Dio not taking any chances. Gets his pets blown up. Avoids too much damage and just teleports away and re-ups on the pets that's usually what you see in this exchange you'll usually see a druid get their pets blown up and back off but dio sometimes will will flip the script and he knows that his opponent thinks he'll do that just like in that situation right there he knows his opponent thinks he'll do that so he'll actually push the pressure without pets dio is so unpredictable on a druid that, that's what makes him really good you just don't know what he's going to do. Max block, full DR, life leads, dodges. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, dude. Well, I mean, there's that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Toe-to-toe -to -toe battle here. 
That was a high risk exchange from Chris. That was a high risk exchange. He cannot lose a round in this. And he chose to sit there and be like, yeah, let's go. You want to chuck NATOs and stay right here? I'll throw jabs at you all day. That was ham. That was high risk. That was play of the play of the game right there. Emma one NATO and down probably. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't like he was at a high life total. Like he was super low. Still just choosing to jab, dude. Choosing to sit right in the pocket and jab. That was insane, man. That was cool. Clutch call. I'm actually happy. I'm happy Chris came out in that exchange. I want to see this go go 3 0. I want to see Chris go 3 0 on EU and have a sudden death match. It's gonna be it's gonna be bad news if if Chris wins this round. If Chris wins this round and it goes 3 0, we have to flip a coin. We have to flip a coin to discover which server the sudden death round is on and if it's on eu and this goes 3-0 that might be bad news for dio Sixty-five percent dodge plus armor and shield. Yeah, it's so tough to hit us on, man. But honestly, like, good. I mean, Amazons are are kind of low on the totem pole right now. So, like, uh, you know, good for them, I guess. Like, they're able to contend with one of the top duelers. Uh, it, it certainly makes a druid really think in this matchup, uh, particularly. You have to really think, man. You have to be very tricky, evasive, and opportunistic. Needs to undercut, then get out. I, I I, honestly would have thought that's what we would see a lot more of. Uh, and, and we might actually see it in this round. It's it's super important that uh, that it happens in this round. Like, I, I think we might see him do a lot more undercutting and getting out of there. But then again, Chris is very good at walking up, too. He, like, he doesn't just walk down impulsively like a lot of uh, hybrid zones will do. They, they teach you that, man. Like, they just say, when in doubt walk down right but a good druid will know to undercut you and chuck a nato and get out but chris not so easily fooled by that right like not so easily like oh just walk down he bases where he walks off from what you're doing so he's gonna predict how you're coming in how you're approaching him and respond to that he's a very intelligent zon Yeah, on Shatterbow you do have faster IAS. It's definitely the way to go. Even even with uh, even with faith, even with that fanaticism, aura, dude. Like, there's certain breakpoints you want to hit. Zon Zon certainly benefits from having a, a lot of IAS, even though she has uh, the fanaticism aura from faith. Oh, he ain't got enough. He ain't got enough dexterity for that faith. What the hell's going on? What the hell's what the hell's going on? Yeah, he's got that shadow bow too. He's pointing that out. Oh, he's he's got his he's got his bow gear on. Yeah, he's got his bow gear on. Yep. I see. I see. He points to his rings to be like, shut up, Cooley. It's battle orders time. I get it. Can you explain the difference between uh different directions on the screen? E.g. walk down, spear up. Yeah. Yeah, so um so like walk down is is basically what it is, right? Like walk down is you walk downwards on the screen. It's it's typically what they teach you when you have an aggressive player. Like if you're a necro v druid, right? The necro walks down, uh, and that's typically it started in LOD because if you walked down, the attacks had a difficult time hitting you, and it's still the same in D2R. But you can move in a lot more directions in D2R, and the attacks still have a trouble, still have trouble hitting you. Uh, up spearing, uh, like up spearing and up smiting, usually refer to a player clicking directly on themselves with the attack, or close to themselves or close to their feet. So, like up spear would just be clicking close to your character and spearing, or up spear it, up smite, up NATO. It just means you're teleporting or you're staying in a spot and and shooting that NATO or that attack close to your character with your cursor not far from your character. And that's usually to catch a name lock should your opponent choose to stomp. 
So up doesn't necessarily mean up. It just means close to your character. Nice, dude. On the hardcore Javazon, good find. What rings go on this kind of classic build? Ravenfrost for sure. Yep. Uh, yep. Ravenfrost. Uh, and he probably also has... I didn't quite see the ring that he swapped to. But uh, he probably has Life Leech on this. He probably has Life Leech on that ring. Uh, attack rating. Um, maybe Cold Resistance. Mana, Life. It's certainly a rare ring with Leech. Certainly a rare ring with Leech. Darren said he can jump on in 45 minutes. GG. 45 minutes, I have a hard stop, unfortunately. I got a friend that's coming at 9. So we may or may not see that. But damn. Damn. I hope he, I hope he can make it sooner. Good old BK ring works uh, good, though. Yeah, it, it has plus one to skills and life leech. So that's actually not bad either. If you have a plus five BK, that's, that's not horrible. Also helps with your uh, with your lightning fury damage. There, there's a few options, but if if I was this Zon, I would have like, I would probably have the maximum amount of life leech that I could possibly have versus a druid. Chooses to get out of that exchange, and I can't really blame him there. He might be looking to bow. Did chose chose not to shift click there? Very interesting. Shift clicking with with cube bow is like one of the best things that that's one of the best quality of life changes that's ever hit PvP is shift clicking. Yeah, Dio getting a little bit more conservative with his approach here, trying to get in, chuck a NATO and get out. Yeah, he notices the desperation here. He knows if he, if he loses this round, there's a chance he stays on the EU server. So he's really getting into shape here. That he's he's really shaping up his uh his his attacks and his strategy. But unfortunately, so is Chris. Uh it, you know, Chris is doing a great job of forcing him to get out and landing damage just like that before he does. Chris is doing a phenomenal job on this on this uh classic hybrid right here. Yeah, just like that. That was actually a very good angle there, Root. But uh unfortunately, I don't he didn't land anything. And uh and Chris leached back an entire life pool. Yeah, I think so too. It's definitely hard for a druid because any of that lag, like the lag, the the high ping is is bad in this man. It's so bad. Like because you need to teleport in and out. You need to be like responsive. Yeah, it's such a quick engagement. Uh, a, a druid's engagement with a Zahn in this matchup should be very quick. Like, in and out. You know, force the Zahn. Force the Zahn to make very quick decisions and hit you accurately up close. And before they can switch to strafe and land any significant damage, need mana. Uh, does someone want to... Let me see if I can... Oh, they might go to... Uh, they might go to Act 2. I'm going to see if I can join Dio, though. See if I can friend join Dio. Dio, are you are you online, bro? Are we friends on here, Dio? The fuck are we not even? Dio is not even friends with me. Dio, Dio ain't even my friend. I can't friend join him, and I can't friend join and do. Uh, but they're they're just gonna go to Act Two. But uh, I would pull for you. Thank you, Crafted. I appreciate it, dude. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. And honestly, we've we've limited Leech on the Zon as much as we can, basically. Like, there's still a limit. It's 16 Leech. So you can't have over 16. And the reason we did that, I remember we thought about it very critically when we did. And it's because of the life Leech that naturally exists on, like, Titans uh, and other gear. Um that you that we had to cap it at 16 so like yeah it's like just how it is naturally like it's it's tough to go under that like titans granted there's other things maybe we should specify it though where if you use titans you can have up to 15 or up to 16 or whatever but if you don't you're capped at 
something else. Yeah, there's just certain best in slot items that you can't it's so hard to cap the leech on a Zon. Without without absolutely nerfing the best in slot items that they can use. It, it's so weird. I, I think we tried. I think initially I set the limit to like seven or eight. And someone was like, just want to let you know, you can't use Titans plus anything else. Like, it's Titans, and you can't use anything else with Leech. And these items can have it. Like, the blood gloves that you have to craft naturally have it. It's like, yep, that's true. Yep, so, so that being the case, it's like, it's hard to cap the Life Leech. But also, Zons are kind of bottom tier right now. So when it comes to it, it's like, yeah, okay, let's not nerf the build. Yeah, Dio's in a lot of trouble here. Dio is in a lot of trouble. I'm wondering at this point if it's better to go in with, like, no pets so that he can't leech back. Go in with, like, Oak only. Try to get a NATO in from a random angle and just peace out. Like, because this strategy is, is really not favoring Dio here. And he's getting absolutely punished for it. Every time he comes in, he gets those pets blown up, and Chris leeches back a ton of life. Very, very tough for him. Oh, yeah, he's going in with a dilapidated amount. A dilapidated amount of pets here. He's not going in full pets. But Chris is running low on jabs here. This is very interesting. Chris is running low on the on his E-Rep jabs. He ain't letting it stop him, though. He's still chucking him. He's still chucking him. Oof. Oof. That's going to be interesting. Because if he wins this round... If he wins this round, that's going to be weird. Yeah, and he's having trouble now, man. He's, he's trying to he's trying to battle orders, but he can't do it. He can't do it. His items are preventing him from battle orders here. Yeah, and he's trying to E-rep them back. Oh. Rough, dude. Dio might, Dio might steal this because of that battle orders. Dio might steal it, and there it is, man. So what we noticed was a crucial mistake uh, in, in something that happened there with Chris. He couldn't swap out for his battle orders. So there was something about his items that was preventing him from swapping to his CTA. So he couldn't get his battle orders back. That was interesting. It might have been the ring. He might have chose to keep on Bull Cathos. And that might have prevented him from swapping back over. I wonder what happened there. Possibly the wrong the wrong rings. Yeah, I think I think he might have left something off in the cube. That could have been it, dude. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's insane. And Dio got it. Dio squeaked that one out, dude. And, and he was in a lot of trouble. Dio was going to lose that round. That was nuts. That was very clutch. Oh, yeah. Okay, so there's something. Oh, that's so weird. I noticed him trying to swap, but he couldn't. Yeah, he says couldn't bow. Plus slot jabs. Oh... Is that what it is? Oh, lost, lost jabs, yeah. God, dude, that's rough. Yeah, he was, that duel went on so long, he was losing his jabs. And also couldn't bow, just a really bad combination. And honestly, favored Dio for surviving so long. Like, and it, Dio was engaging, doing what he needed to do. And it just so happened, man, he took advantage of that situation right there. And it favored him. He was he was in a lot of trouble. He was in a lot of trouble, but he pulled it out, man. Holy hell. But by the way, what we'll do is, uh, first of all, congratulate both of these players. That was an insane duel. That was an insane duel. And then we're actually going to pop over to Dirty. My boy, Dirty. Versus Riz. Going up against a ghost, dude. This is actually pretty insane. Uh, it's a really good, really good duel to watch right here. Um... So Dirty is on his Necro, and he's going up against the Ghosts. 
Now, typically, it's a very tough matchup uh, for any Sin to go up against the Necro, but Riz is a different kind of assassin, man. Uh, you know, different kind of assassin. And we're going to see if he has what it takes to take on the most improved player ever in the DFC, Dirty. Dirty, who actually went for a title shot. Started from the bottom, made it to title shot status, dude. We're going to see if he's got what it takes. Very close duel for Chris versus Dio. Wow, man, that was incredible. I actually love seeing uh, classic Zons go at it, man. I think there's a lot of skill involved in that. Let me switch this. Uh, let me switch this out here to a uh, a widescreen setup. I know it sort of looks weird on the screen right now. I'm gonna try to adjust that. I'm gonna try to adjust it so it doesn't look as uh, doesn't look as busted. Maybe this is also something that we can revisit <laughs> tomorrow. Widescreen rules. Maybe that maybe that's also something that's gonna be on the table. This, this rule set might get a revamp tomorrow. Might might have a lot of changes. What an event. What an event. I'm still adjusting it on my side, boys. Bear with me. I'm trying to make it look as close to original aspect ratio as possible. It's it's a craft, and I try to do it perfectly for you boys, so you don't so you don't miss a frame, you don't miss a pixel. But it's tough. It's odd, and everybody has a different widescreen, so it's like <laughs> very fine tuning, fine tuned adjustment here. Ah, it looks bad. I fucked it up. Hold on, I'm going back. What do I do? All right, it's not horrible. It's not the best, but it's not horrible. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Dirty versus Riz. So Riz is like a, a vicious ghost, dude. This guy, this guy is the ghost you don't want to see. The ghost you don't want to see in the DFC. This guy has been on ghost since the, the good old days of LOD. And he is an absolute pro. Yeah, yeah, my bad. It, it, that wasn't Titans. He had Titans in the stash, but those were those were some E-Rap jabs. Those were actually very nice jabs. Yeah, it was so weird, man. It was so weird with that battle. I'm surprised he couldn't swap out to that battle order. His jabs, jabs must have given him stats or something. There was something so weird about that that he couldn't swap. Someone send the max roll for classic hybrids on. I might, ha I might have to put something together, man. I'm just waiting for a good catalyst. This is what I need in the Cooley main channel videos. I need a catalyst. Something that launches that build into something worthy of people's time. Like Extimus, for example, he's the type of guy that will put together build videos that no one's going to make. They're really cool, but no one's going to make them because there's no catalyst. There's no reason to do it besides just having fun. I've set a standard on my Cooley main channel. There needs to be a catalyst for the build. Like there is a reason or there's something crazy about this build. There's a lot of builds that I've wanted to do. Like, for example, I, I can't tell you how much time I waste in the course of a week truly believing in a build. Let me name two builds that I put so much footage together. I wrote a script for and everything, but they never made actual videos. Perhaps on Cooley Live, they might. Two builds. Blade Fury Sin. It's so cool. It's so cool, man. I love it. I put together a script. I wrote everything out. I made some nasty builds. It just doesn't have a catalyst. It's not good versus Ubers, so I can't sell it to the PVM people. It hasn't absolutely ravaged the DFC scene yet. There's nothing where I can say, like, y'all should do this. You know? It, it, like, 
there's there's no catalyst to like launch the build into stardom is what i say like into news something newsworthy that's like worth seeing it or worth people going out of their way to chase down the items because even in the best case scenario you could say someone like max was able to blow up some insane players in the dfc which i think is newsworthy but unless you're a sin player like max you're not going to do that it's unreasonable for to expect a regular player to do what max does the other one the other build wrote a script for did so many builds but i'm waiting on a catalyst the aura sork i think i missed my window on it i think there was a time in history where it would have been dope and it still could be but i'm just waiting on a catalyst like something that makes that build actually good like the reason i finally did a tesla din or an oridin video i think i really mainly did that video more for the oridin but tesla din was what everybody come to know and expect but the reason i could turn that video into something and make a video around such a build that was typically not good is there was a catalyst terror zones it suddenly made that build actually good for how most people farm terror zones with a paladin solo a lot of people aren't joining up with like eight player games they, they just aren't it's hard to join pub games because you don't know who created the game so it could be terrorized at level 85 which completely defeats the point so instead of you know mustering up friends when shit terror zones are a thing you can just run an Oridin. And in my opinion, it, that's the best P1 Paladin to level with. Just wrecks everything. If you want to level and MF at the, at the same time, that's the catalyst. There's no greater build in my opinion. That's, that's why I made my Oridin on my, on my other account. I just wanted to kind of late level and MF at the same time. It's the best build. So good. I think a hybrid Amazon falls into that same category currently. It's really good. It's an awesome build. And there's just no big catalyst for it. And also, we did check out something back in the days of TFC Priest. I wish I was able to sit down with him and check out his build there because I wasn't able to do that part. When we did the, when we did the, uh, the champion video for DFC Priest way back in the day, days of LOD, I wanted to break down his build, but he wasn't available to do it for me. Made a Tesla in and solo cell found and it wrecks P1. Absolutely wrecks, dude. I seriously don't think there's a better build. Like, there's not a more fun, enjoyable build to level through P1 terror zones with than an Oridin and or Tesla in. Mine is on non-ladder and doesn't even have a Sunder Charm. I can't wait till I get a Sunder Charm. That build's just gonna wreck, man. It's so easy. You just walk through even fire immunes. Even fire immunes, no Sunder Charm. You just walk through them, boom, blow them up. It's so cool. You you barely need to hit shit. You barely actually need to like go up and swing at stuff. Yeah, it's crazy, man. So these guys are going at it. We're seeing Dirty. Dirty on his Dirty Necro versus Riz the Ghost, AKA Zed in game. Oh my god, Zed getting in, aka Riz getting in some nasty hits early on, man. Getting in some nasty hits, and apparently it looks like he might have been might have avoided a lot of this damage so far. Riz also streaming. I'm gonna check this out from his standpoint. Might kind of be fucked up. No, nope, never mind. He just closed out his stream. I have to go back to dirty. I have to go back. It looks like uh, perhaps his stream crashed there. Going back to dirty to catch the action. You actually don't need much, man. All you really need for that Oridin is just the dragons and the Hajj. That's really it. Maybe a maybe a flickering flame would be okay if you don't if you're not worried about run walk speed. It's really not like as expensive as people crack it up to be. Well, um, you're also talking to someone who's used to building characters that are like I look at the base the base gear for an Oridin and I laugh when people call that expensive. 
I'm like, <laughs> LOL. Dream. A couple of jaw runes. LOL. So you're also talking to someone like that. Uh, but like, yeah, Oridin, you just need like a few Sir runes just to build two dragons and a Hajj. Yeah, because of high runes, LOL. That's exactly how I feel. Dude, Riz getting in some damage versus Dirty. I'm actually very impressed with this. He's, he's cut him open. He's got some serious damage in here. So Riz is a ghost sin, and we sort of briefly talked about that in the recent video, but literally only flash seconds worth of footage. Uh, you know, because the video was about a hybrid sin, not a ghost. Uh, but a ghost sin is is predominantly focusing on whirlwind damage. Like, they, they are a mini barbarian, basically. And it's putting dirty on the ropes here, man. He, he's trying the elite strategy here, trying to... Trying to uh, uh, you know, get a spirit train going and hopefully catch, uh, hopefully catch Riz. Now he had this, um, he had a very good strategy. He was launching bone spirits by his feet. And that's actually very intelligent versus a ghost because it makes it so that when they teleport in, uh, they, they run the risk of eating a train of bone spirits that will immediately change direction and, and go after the ghost. I think that's actually a good strategy from Dirty. If he keeps that strategy up, it could be a, it could be a quick night versus Riz. Uh, you know, just having, just having those bone spirits immediately be able to change direction and go after the ghost sin is what you want. You want to punish them for coming in. Oh, you're on offline, so you work with what you have. Yeah, yeah, no, no doubt, no doubt. And and I think that like if you're actually trying to MF and stuff on single player offline, probably hero editing stuff is is uh, faux pas. Probably not a good way to go. Kind of defeats the purpose. I don't I don't solo I don't like offline a lot. Uh, you know I usually don't. The only reason I would offline is to create a build in single player to test it out. But some people that's their thing. Sweet Phil does a lot of that too. He does a lot of MFing like solo. I have two sirs sitting in my inventory. Just haven't found a cham yet. Ah, oh, damn. I found a cham the other day on Battle.net. Got it on stream, too. Already made Enigma and Infinity. Shit. Oh, yeah. Certainly worth keeping, dude. Certainly worth keeping. Is it worth, like, a shit ton? Probably not, because a lot of times Necros that have the rare diadems are looking for 230, 22 open socket. Uh, the 30% the faster run walk, people ask about that all the time, and they're wondering why the faster run walk is something good. Uh, it's usually good because of those walk down matchups, right? It's it's good in the walk the or the run down matchups, where you're going up against a druid. You need to actually move on the map and not teleport. Uh, it's really good. Uh, it, it also is, is uh, useful against a sin, uh, as well um, in that specific exchange right there uh, it's very good especially for a sin that's that's mixing in traps and by the way dirty is in a lot of trouble dude you might actually be seeing Riz swap out his chaos claw here Riz noticing that his opponents at one life might have actually swapped out his chaos claw to his main hand that's a dirty trick that a lot of these sins do you saw dazer do it in the most recent video and i learned that there's a reason why you want to do that uh when you swap your claw to your main hand and you dragon talon someone it hits them first with magic damage so it blows through it, it like blows through you could even hit it with a whirlwind blows through that bone armor and makes it so that they don't absorb all of those hits with their bone armor so they are at true one true one life when you have your chaos on your main uh, i think riz might have just done that i'm not sure if it works with blade fury i don't want to say it without knowing it 100 but uh it may also work with the damage from blade fury i think it also adds magic damage from blade fury and potentially a close teleport can hit them with magic damage too psychic hammer yeah 100 psychic hammer will also do it psychic hammer is a great point that that can also kill without even having a name lock He might actually be using it too. But now now Dirty has repped back a little bit of life. Yeah, it's it's really good in this situation too. Uh it's really good in this situation too when you've one life to Necro. It, it's extremely good. It can finish them. But now Dirty has repped back to probably a couple hundred life. 
But now, you know, Riz connected, but it doesn't look like he cut him open or got enough venom going to one-life him. So he's still going to be hunting for it, dude. Ooh. He's still okay. Dirty's still okay, man. That bone armor is going to keep him living. That bone armor is going to keep him living. And it's also going to keep Riz on the outside. Riz is going to be looking for a perfect angle and not trying to over hyperextend himself here. Because he knows he has the Necro in trouble. The Necro is a very tough matchup for any sin. And he's going to try to time this properly. He's, he's probably going to have to get in another Whirlwind, though, at this point. Yeah, yeah, he did. He, he, he Riz definitely had a window there, but it's hard to tell because the Necro is going to keep his distance. Yeah, it's it's what you see at the highest level of competition, though, dude. That open in those tabs, like the the C and the T, gives uh, the player far more leverage to teleport in one direction. It's not as necessary on uh, on a widescreen or um, in D two R in general. There's a lot of players that get away without doing it. Uh, it's habit for a lot of players, but it also still d does give you some leverage in in D two R. I remember the first time I saw someone CT casting. I think it was actually one of Maddie's videos. I think I might have actually seen it before I met Maddie virtually. And I was like, what the hell is he doing? I, I didn't really get it. I thought he was like glitching out and messing up. But apparently there's a strategy to it. Come to find out. It's very important. It gives you a lot of leverage, especially when you're trying to escape somebody. I, I do it still a lot when I'm trying to get away from somebody. Riz trying to get that damage in, but at this point, man, at this point, Dirty has repped back a significant amount of life. He's now he's he's now out of that like psychic hammer and or chaos claw kill. He's out of that range now. He needs to get clocked hard with a good whirlwind again. And Riz looking for it. Necro is definitely a hard matchup. Yeah, in LOD, certainly doubles the range of your skills. Oh, really? Yeah, so you can do it in PVM, too. CT cast, and, and she can't even hit you. That's crazy. Yeah, just sit down at the bottom of her entryway and just CT cast up. Per she's at the perfect angle, too. Dirty repping that life back. He's now safe. It's there. It is, man. I, I knew. I knew it was gonna put Riz in this dire situation. It was gonna put him in this dire situation where he was gonna. He was gonna be forced to get up close again. And whereas Dirty has picked up on the strategy of launching those bone spirits close at his feet, it's really tough for Riz to get up close like that. Uh, and it forced him to do it. Yeah, that was insane. And that's that's our boy Dirty, man. Most improved. Most improved, boys. A dirty, dirty brings that aggression that we always hope to see. The the necessary balance. Dirty has learned to bring a necessary balance of defensive and offensive play on a necro. You know what I mean? There's there's some uh, there's some top tier players that sometimes will defer on being defensive and feeling out their opponents, which is good and understandable. But Dirty relies on what he has for experience on this Necro to understand the matchup and implement the game plan he needs to implement. Uh, often switching from, you know, necessary defense to offense. He's, he's very good. Fun to watch, man. An inspirational player on a Necro. And phenomenal to see him come back from one life. That's just insane. Nicely done. Nicely done, Dirty. Gets round one. I'm not going to lie, though. I'm not going to lie. As much as I love this guy, much as I love Dirty, and I usually root for Dirty, I find myself rooting for Riz in this matchup just because, yeah, yeah, F sins, but also F Necros, okay? Necros too strong. I, I want to see me a sin take down a Necro back on the ropes especially one of these very rare sins such as a ghost oh it's a tough matchup dude and you can't help but root for the underdog 
All right, Riz's stream back up. I'm going to see if we can dial into it. Doesn't look like he's widescreen, so let me, sw let me swap back over to this. This should be an appropriate aspect ratio here. F widescreen. Yeah, we might have to revisit. I'm, I'm, I'm writing this down in the notes, too. I'm writing this down in the notes, too. This, this will be something we talk about tomorrow. Rules. Rules. Uh, cold stack. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to change. Maybe ES. There's just something wrong that we need to talk about. We need to get to the bottom of. We're going to do that tomorrow. But also, widescreen? In it? That would have to come with an understanding. And maybe one of you guys know. Uh, if you have a widescreen, it's possible to swap to a regular aspect ratio, right? Like you can, if you have a widescreen monitor you can switch to a regular uh, regular aspect ratio. Like, it's not impossible, right? Because I would hate to, if somebody just naturally has a widescreen and they can't change it and it's just always like that, that would be the, I don't want to force people to buy new monitors. Word, okay. So you felt it was also giving him an advantage there too. Interesting. Most advanced. <laughs> uh oh, coming for dirt, coming for that reputation of dirty. He says not most improved, just most advanced. Most CT distanced, most casting distance on the natural screen. I was never convinced that it really did, Will. Honestly, I was never convinced that it really did. But other rule sets have banned it. And I have certainly heard complaints about... Uh, I've heard them from some notable players. And I do listen. Sometimes I don't always respond, but I do hear it. So I appreciate when people say things to me. I've heard it from, from some very notable players that it, it, it does make a difference. Uh, and, and it's always... Here's the thing. It always matters in the highest tier of competition. All of these subtleties rarely ever matter at like the bottom tier. It's always when you have the most skilled, high, highly ranked players going up against each other is when you're gonna see a difference. Widescreen is BM in a lot of tourneys. They uh, don't enforce it though. So you can see half of a screen more, yeah. So you can grab locks and people don't know it. Yeah, Th and that's the argument. That's the argument. I I've certainly heard that. Here's the thing though, and, and it, think about this from my angle too for a second, from like the person who enjoys people popping on the Discord and streaming. The second you ban widescreen, you give people a reason not to stream their gameplay. Because just like Jess says, it's hard to enforce. And with this, with the setup that we have, we're getting a little bit of choppy footage here, guys. Don't worry about that. Uh, with with the current way that we try to encourage people to stream by not judging their widescreen and not judging certain you know uh ways of play uh being very liberal in the item choice rule sets giving people a chance it encourages people to stream so the answer to that is you could require people to stream but then you require you to watch every match or require people to be in the discord streaming it whenever they do their match He says, two seconds, please. Oh, shit, something must be going down. He, he also has a little one, so he might, he might have some daddy duties that he has to take care of. Good guy. What a good guy. He might have some daddy duties or, or something, I would imagine, is what's going on. And this is, this is what I like seeing. I mean, I like seeing it on both ends. I like seeing the good sportsmanship of people like Riz. I also love seeing the bad sportsmanship of people like Doombringer when he gets elite talking shit in the Bloodmore and drops a fucking blizz on him. Like, both of them are entertaining, okay? And I love seeing... I love seeing both ends of it. You know, I think it's all situational. I, I think it's all situational. But, man, it's... Both of them are enjoyable. Trash talk makes for good viewing, for sure, for sure. It's so often though, sometimes we'll see trash talking and then no progress. People be bitching, oh, I can't do this, just like we saw today. And both of them are understandable, that's the thing. I don't want you guys to think that I hold anything against any of the players. I understand both sides of that argument. 
but sometimes you just see that it's like mad shit talking and they're trying to win duels with their with their uh, fingertips you know typing it's hard it's hard to do that's when you love seeing someone just roll up and drop a blizz on you while you're talking shit no more i would have upheld that win that would have been one of the cool that would have been knockout of the night yeah tough tough duel to ref man like it was it was tough i was i was equally as frustrated as you guys watching it my hands were tied on a lot of decisions to do though because i also try to be very i don't try i love you guys but i try not to be biased or swayed by your opinions about what to do and like you know i appreciate level-headed suggestions but so often it's just like ban this guy dq this guy like there is a 0.01% chance I'm going to do that because someone said it in chat. But that 0.01% chance is enough to encourage a lot of people to say DQ. Well, also, you got to figure he's a ghost and he probably doesn't have anything invested in traps. So, like, the damage that he does with traps has an equal amount of chance of getting absorbed by uh, spirit. And, and granted, uh, Dirty might not be using spirit, but, like, you see what I mean? Like, it, there's he doesn't do any damage with his traps. So he's doing, he's focusing pure whirlwind. He's probably maxed out Venom, maxed out Claw Mastery, maxed out uh, Shadow Master, Mind Blast. Um, there's a lot of things he's maxed out and none of them are traps. So the damage won't be even be enough to stun or get even significant chip damage in that Dirty isn't going to just heal from. Dude, Elite lost, man. Elite lost, but it was a very it was a very drama-filled duel. It's a very drama-filled duel. Yep, for sure. He lost to Doom. That's insane. That's insane. If he he's gotta get his duel in tonight too against uh he has one more round he's gotta get in against Go Gators. I don't think we'd have time to watch it, but I would certainly love to tune in and see it. Uh otherwise. I'm forced to make a decision on that, and I will have to give the win to Go Gators if they don't finish their duel some at some point tonight. And that is devastating for so I can imagine that is emotionally devastating for someone like Elite, someone who takes a lot of pride in their character and their performance. That would be two losses, three losses in a row for Elite, which can't feel good. which can't feel good. It would be a concession to Toshank. That's a, not necessarily a concession, but we gave Toshank the win because there was no agreement reached on an alternate matchup and Elite did not agree to do the main matchup. So that is a, we count that as a dodge a, or a concession to, to that player. 420 subs, hell yeah, man. Appreciate all you guys and cheers to that. A cheers and a smoke to that. An elite loss is always drama. There's one time I've seen an elite loss that wasn't in some way debated. I'm just saying the facts. I love the guy. I fucking love elite. People talk shit about him. I fucking love that guy. I love that guy because he doesn't give a fuck about what any of you guys think or say about him. Or how, like, I fucking love that guy. And he's just good. And he'll beat your ass. Oh, and down goes Dirty. I, I gotta say, I love seeing me a ghost sin just whirlwind smack the shit out of a necro, boys. Now, that's something to see. That is something to see. Yeah, it comes with the territory, man. It's lonely at the top. Elite is like the definition of lonely at the top. That's what a widescreen does. Click in hit you can't see yep if top pvpers didn't do drama no one would watch i think there's something to that like just think about and i, I want i want to say this with a, a preface statement i am in no way condoning the behavior of all pvp players right 
But when you think about, just think about for a minute when you see Elite getting tilted, right? There's something entertaining about that. Somewhere deep down, there's something entertaining about it. Like, he doesn't need to be chucking spirits. He just need like, literally, how many title matches have we seen where Elite says something to his opponent, and we know you have commanded the respect of Elite. We know that the tables have turned in the duel and you are switching on elite vamp the champ mode. Or how many times have we seen Jess pride duel somebody and talk mad shit coming in like a fucking WWE champ, not a DFC champ, but a WWE champ. We saw him in LOD pride match somebody who he fucking detested. He was healing back, dropping his charms in the blood more to reduce his life total so that his replenish life would heal back more life so that when he picked his charms back up and re-battle ordered, he could within a minute or so be full life just to pride duel someone all while lacing and talking shit. Now, there's something entertaining about that. There's just something where you see somebody actively not using healing pots, but he might as well be because he wants to pride win against somebody. If you don't find that entertaining, or at least hilarious to some degree, High level PvP may not be for you. Right? It just may not be. Me and Darren start now. Oh shit! I got five minutes before I got a hard stop. I'ma wait till I'ma wait till my girl shows up. Uh my my friend. She is we got we got a we got a uh, game to dominate after this. But I I might tune into that. Uh, this is good. I'm, I'm gonna see if I'm gonna see if Riz can pull off a whirlwind victory here real quick. Oh man, that was a big opportunity there. I feel like there was a big opportunity to grab a name lock, and Riz missed it and ended up eating some spirits or a spear for his troubles. That could have been game changing right there in this round. Live in the Discord, champ is fighting. All right, boys. We might have five to ten minutes left. And we got cut over to the champ here, just real quick. I want I want everybody who might be watching this stream, if you want to see more of this, I have a hard stop here real soon. But I just want to let you know, these guys are streaming in the Discord. And I want to cut over to the champ's point of view here, because this boy is the champ. And we have, we've been, we have not seen our champ duel in a couple of weeks here. And he's going to be going against Darren, aka Stadium PK. This is Stadium's chance at getting a dfc title now this is how this is going to work because it's a weird situation whatever duel finishes first is going to be for the title assuming that toshank loses any of these matchups right if he doesn't they're both for the title but he still has a looming duel versus 230 that is outstanding and ready to go and we can't deny 230 that sin v sin matchup for the title that's going to be something dope uh but if this duel finishes first and by chance Toshank loses, Darren will be the champion. Stadium PK is new champion. Whichever one finished first. If 230 finished first and then this duel happened, it would be a non-title fight. But whereas it looks like this one's gonna finish first, this is a title fight. So this is Stadium PK's chance. And he's gonna be trying to get in here. Look at this. Look at it, don't go blind, guys. Don't have a seizure from this. Jess is gonna be doing the nastiest CT casting you've ever seen. He's one of the most aggressive trappers you'll ever see, man. And this is why this guy is champ right here. This is why this guy is the champ. One of the most aggressive trappers you will see. But it's going to be coming with a lot of flashy shit with this CT casting. Wow, nice whirlwind there from Darren. Now, Darren's going to be trying to basically just catch Jess. He's going to be trying to keep up. And what, what Toshank said before this duel started, he says, you can't hit what you can't catch. 
he doesn't think that Stadium PK is going to be able to catch him and land any significant whirlwinds. And look at this. He clipped him there. Darren clipped him. But the thing is, replenished life is real, man. So he's going to have to keep up that pressure. And it isn't like Jess is, like, lacing around, just setting five traps, waiting for Darren to roll into him. He's CT casted, trying to dump these on top of Darren. Nice hits from Darren. Darren got some serious damage in there. It's hard to tell exactly what Darren's life total is. I'm actually, while we're watching this, I'm going to see if we can... Uh, See if we can pop in and and see Darren stream. Uh, I'm gonna see if he's streaming on Twitch. And if he is, we'll pop over and check it out. Oh my god, dude. He's getting some serious damage in here versus the champ. And he is live. He is live, so I'm gonna get this set up. I'm gonna get this set up, boys. And we might see something. Oh my God. Woo. This could be serious. Yeah, so we can we can see this from his standpoint too. So so after this, we'll actually we'll uh, we'll cut over if we got time. We'll cut over and see if we can see it from Darren's standpoint. Oh my god. I'm so happy we actually get to see this duel tonight, man. I absolutely love watching both of these guys go at it. Stadium PK, a very deliberate, careful, methodical dueler. And he's getting some serious damage in here against the champion. Jess, a very aggressive dueler on just about every build you'll ever see him on. And a Sin being the one that he's trying to bring. Uh, trying, trying to bring some really good accolades to his name here. I think Jess is really after my, my accolades... Uh, to call him the number one sin on Battle.net. I think he's after it. He's going for it. Uh, and he's well on his way. He's already achieved DFC gold, which I said was going to be the first the first step. Now, I said I didn't care if he did that on a sin because you'd have to take it from Elite most likely, and it's almost impossible to do, to do that on a sin. It's almost impossible. It's not impossible, but it's almost impossible. There's like a 5% chance you're beating him. Dude, it's serious CT quick casting, dude. Like, look at this shit. It's insane. Oh, I really like that trap that uh, that uh, Toshank just set up. Did you see what he did there? He CT casted five traps and purposely paused and waited for Stadium PK to approach him. And as soon as he did, he waited and timed it perfectly so that, so that Darren had that name lock. Stadium PK had the name lock. And as soon as he teleported in, Toshank teleported to his five traps in a puddle and trapped Stadium PK, mind blasting him and trapping the shit out of him. Now that's some high level play right there. Baited him hard on that. That's some champion shit right there. That's some champion shit. Well played on behalf of Jess. That was insane. And, and you can't tell if your stadium, like, you know, you see finally, you finally see Toshank staying still. So you're not going to pass that up, man. You're going in. You're going in for that name lock. And holy shit, man. That was one of the best baits I've seen at least this, you know, this month. Oh, big hits from stadium too. This might be the most intense... This might be the most intense title fight we've seen in a long time. Yeah, Jess is playing pure trap. Uh, he he can he has the option to go Whirl Girl, but you certainly don't want to go Whirl Girl against a Barb. You're not going to Whirlwind a Whirlwind Barb. Uh, that would be a mistake. Uh, so so even if he has the ability to go Whirl Girl, he certainly won't in this matchup. He's going to keep his distance and he's going to keep his traps up. That's where he's going to win. Yeah, he, he's not going to go uh, try to go whirl for whirl with a barb. You, you don't do that on a spider. You might be able to pull it off on a ghost. You, you might be able to pull it off. You're not doing it on a, on a spider or any other hybrid or whirl girl build. Yeah, it's most intelligent in this matchup to go pure trap. There he goes trying to bait again and he might have pulled it off. He actually might have landed some serious damage there. Yeah, this this shit'll make you dizzy, dude. The the 
I'm so happy we get to see this. Even though it might be hard to follow and hard to see what's going on, you can actually see how nasty Jess is at CT casting. Just try to keep your eyes on the center of the screen and, and Jess's map. That's what he's using as a first person player of this right here to gauge his position and where he's at. So as a viewer too, try to keep your eye on Diesel, the character Diesel on the mini map. That's gonna orient you in all of this absolute craziness. And oh my God, Darren gets it, man. Darren took that round and caught Jess. What an incredible play, especially after two nasty baits, basically putting Darren at 10% life for a good portion of that duel. Holy shit, man. Holy shit. All right, boys, let's get this, let's get this up. Let's, let's get this going. I am overburdened. Let's get this going. Yes. Let's see if we can, uh, I'm going to try to adjust this so we can, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to adjust my position on the browser here and see if we can watch this from stadium PK's standpoint. Oh my God, dude, that was an incredible. Incredible comeback. All right, so this is Stadium PK's standpoint here. I'm going to keep Jess's live too so we can swap back and forth. This is Darren himself, boys. Stadium PK. Stadium PK at Twitch. Now, this guy is the man. Uh, not a man of many words. But what he, what he lacks in words... He makes up for in skill for PvP in his first legitimate title match here against the champion, Toshank. And he's off to a great start on round one. This is incredible. This is incredible. I I'm going to have to re-up on this. I'm going to have to re-up. check my messages make sure my friend hasn't showed up yet make sure i'm not being a make sure i'm not being a loser i think this might be her i think i see someone driving in we might have a limited time here boys a limited time but i'm, I'm gonna watch this next round this is what we'll do after this uh after i have had my fill and i feel it is socially unacceptable to stream anymore We'll kick over to Stadium PK, boys, and I'll send you the link. And we'll go over there and check this out on Twitch. Yeah, we've got a fight, man. Oh, my God. This is nuts. Oh, really? Was he really? The fuck? Uh, he's, a, he's a good dude, man. He, I, he's typically a good dude. You also got to figure, like, if it was if it was a GM PK game. Yeah, that's weird. But, like... uh like pub games totally different i've run into some people in pub games i can't even remember who it was i think it might have been audacity i think i ran into audacity in a pub game once and he like nk'd me and stole my gold and i'm like all right welcome to the pub games welcome to the pub games it just happens sometimes i don't hold it against anybody i'm just like whatever that's a, that's a pub game i actually expected that maybe he could have been dude he could have been he's usually a wicked cool dude i've never seen this guy be toxic he might have been drunk he certainly he certainly ain't under the influence of anything rotten tonight boys this guy is on fucking point catching one of the best most aggressive tricky quickest sins on the planet my gosh dude yeah, it, it's a lot smoother on the eyes to watch this from uh, Stadium PK's standpoint, too. Bro, Toshank is very slippery. Oh, super, man. Super slippery. It, it's a lot easier to watch this from Stadium PK's standpoint, too, because he doesn't do as much CT casting. Basically, what he's doing is trying to... He's hunting for a name lock. Every time Jess comes close to him, he's looking for a name lock. He's looking to chain. Uh, it's possible that he could get some Zerks in, too. Uh, not very probable with someone as slippery as Jess, but it could happen. Uh, it could happen. He could be looking for that nasty lock, that nasty chain, chain zerking. My gosh, can you imagine him chain zerking Jess here and getting a win that way? Whoo. 
Man, and Stadium has a vicious barb, too. Absolutely vicious barb. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's usually what I that's usually what I do too. Honestly, I don't care who you are, or how good you are. Like, I just want to have fun in a game usually. Uh, so, like, if people start getting in pissing contests, I just leave. You know what I say though, and what I what I actually appreciate, and I was actually talking to some of the Discord mods about this earlier, is I actually appreciate that a lot of the people who are who tend to be toxic in other games when they come to the DFC or when they come to the Cooley Discord. They get their shit together and they're respectful to people. And I'm like, I feel blessed that that, that they do that. And I, I feel I'm so grateful and happy because I can't control people's behavior everywhere and who they are. I've just I've just love PVP. I love it when people show up, uh, you know, so it's like, uh, you know, I'm just happy that they keep it under, you know, keep it under 100 when they're when they're in the DFC for the most part. Yeah, I think so. You also got to figure too. And this is something that it, once I understood this, PVP got a lot more tolerable for me. And, and this is going to be a tough pill for some people to swallow. A lot of PVP players are better than you. This doesn't apply to everybody. But 99% of us it applies to. A lot of PVP players are better than you. And... They're better than you, and they're also proud of it. They're also, they have practiced and put the time in. They don't have, they feel like anything that's contrary to something that they have learned hard-coded over the years is bullshit, and they ain't got time for no bullshit. Like, they ain't gonna, they ain't gonna listen to your bullshit because they take pride in their character and they should. They've earned it. They're one of the they're the best. They're one of the best on their builds. They're among the top. So this is what I say. That's perfectly fine. I'm not going to be the best. But just all I do is save and exit. When shit gets fucking toxic and weird or just uncomfortable, you can feel it. I just leave. I just leave. I used to do that in fucking uh in LLD games back in uh Lord of Destruction all the time. There were certain people that would join the game and like they would just bring this aura of depressive fucking bullshit with them every time. I would go grief a pub game because I would rather kill a random level 60 than sit here against your prideful ass talking shit. Like it's just more fun for me at that point. Like, you know what I mean? I would just leave. I'm just like, yeah, fuck this guy. There was one guy that hated the fact that I had hybrid items in LOD and would BM the shit out of me just for owning private uh, uh owning hybrid items. Toxic as fuck. What would I do? I would beat the shit out of him and his friends for a round and NK the fuck out of them with my hybrid items. And then I would save an exit and go uh grief a pub game with those same hybrid items. Because I ain't got time for that bullshit. Ain't nobody got time for that bullshit. I would highly suggest if you ever find yourself in that bullshit, just save an exit, man. There's always another duel game. Or there's always a battle net player to grief. You know, we could always kill somebody online and go f and feel good about ourselves. It doesn't have to be this person. Oh, dude, he's using a nasty overlay, dude. He actually sent me the setup for it, and I really need to go back and learn it. Dude, because look at it. You can actually tell what what he's using, the skills that he's clicking on. I, I absolutely love Stadium PK's setup, his overlay for this. It's some sort of overlay, I believe. It's really, really cool. I, I want to get it set up. I haven't, I haven't, like, found the time to do it, but another month or so, I'll have a lot more time. So I, I'm... I might actually try to get this working, especially for like the streams where I go griefing people or just duel all the time. I actually think this is the coolest overlay I've ever seen. Yeah, really, really cool setup. So Darren's in trouble here. He's probably at about 33% life. That's called hacks, Vizlod. That's <laughs> Mad hacks. He's just straight hacking. I think it's an overlay for his stream. So what it does is it's not in his actual game. But I mean, hell, even if it was a nice overlay, but like it's a, it's an overlay for his stream and it pulls your keyboard input and displays certain things 
to basically show your audience what you're doing. Toe too fast, hard to catch. He certainly is, man. Like, look at this. You, you can see it. The second that Stadium is looking for this engagement here, the second that he's hunting for it, the second that Jess is on screen, like, he's got to be quick, man. He's got to be quick. Yeah, it's just a stream. Pretty easy to do. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look into it more. I might, I might hit you up, dude. Honestly, about it when it, when I get serious about putting that on there, I might hit you up about it. Yeah, I, th I think my friend's here. So after this round, after this round, we'll have to uh, we'll have to call it. But we'll we'll, we'll head over to uh, Stadium PK stream. Oh man. Dude, I just want to let you know, I'm also checking out Jess's, Jess's point of view. Jess is in trouble. Jess is very low. Like, you want to see this? Jess is very low. Like, Darren has put in some work. The times that he has caught him, he is extremely low. Yeah. Yeah. So, it might be hard to see because Jess is extremely slippery, but he's been getting smacked by that whirlwind, dude. Yeah, and it's hard to see. Because it's like, it's just as much of a distance duel, you know, as it is close range. Like, it, it, Jess is trying to keep the distance and Stadium PK is trying to get up close. So it's like, it's hard to see because Jess is just immediately gone, immediately slipping away. But dude, holy shit, man, he's in trouble. He's taking a beating. Uh, I'm hoping to do that tomorrow, Root. I'm hoping to do it tomorrow. I'm, I'm going to do a bonus stream tomorrow on Twitch. And uh, I'm, I'm actually hoping to get my match in with uh, with Dazer tomorrow. I'm going to beat his ass. I'm going to beat his ass. He's got a budget sin now, and I know how to fight sins. Dazer's going down in the catch match. I'm showing no mercy. He wants me to show mercy. He asked me to show mercy because he's got a budget sin. Budget Dazer. It's probably still 50 to 100K. More, more than my character's worth. I'm fuck him up, dude. I ain't showing no mercy. Uh, you want you went budget? You gonna have to prove yourself, bro. You gonna have to prove yourself. Oh man, I got it. I got, I think I got it. I think I'm gonna do it. I appreciate that though, Root. Yeah, I think he's still gonna be good even on a budget. Now Darren in trouble, dude. Darren at a sliver of life, and Jess healing back a bit. Jess healing back a bit from that replenished life. Darren now in trouble. And I think what we're going to see is Toshank keeping that distance and trying to hit him with these traps. Theoretically, man, he can get it. But unfortunately, the Mind Blast lock isn't as much of a thing like it used to be. Back in the day when you had a trapper like this, an LOD, or even in patch 2.3, what you could do is just Mind Blast lock the barb and it made it very hard for them to approach you. And you could just deal that nasty, consistent damage and whittle them down from this life total. It's not gonna happen in D2R patch 2.5 and thank God for that. Like it makes for these way more, I think, exciting duels. You can actually see a barb teleport around instead of getting locked down by that Mind Blast. Yeah, still one whirlwind away and uh, yeah, Darren getting very close, though, too. This is nuts, boys. This is a duel. I really wish I could... I, I wish this would have started earlier. If this would have been the first one, if this would have been the first one, this night would have been off to an amazing start. Oh, my God. Dude, what, what would you do if fucking Darren came right back and whirlwinded the shit out of Jess to take this? How fucking insane would that be? How fu oh my god, I was hoping I had my fingers crossed. I had my fingers crossed, boys. Oh, I was hoping. I was hoping it, it could happen. Oh my god. Oh my god, that was nuts, though. What a duel. All right, boys, this is what we're going to do. Uh, let's, let's head over. Let's head over to, uh, we can't necessarily raid directly, but what I'm going to do is grab this link and I'll paste it in the chat uh, because I got a hard stop, boys. I'm a little late. I've got a hard stop, but I'm going to post this in the chat so that you guys all know where to go. And uh, we'll check this out. We'll check this out from Stadium PK standpoint. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, boys, I'll catch you tomorrow for a bonus stream, man. I'll probably just be lacing around bullshitting on Twitch. I'll see you guys over there. We'll probably, I'll try to get my duel in with Dazer. Probably grief some Battle.net. 
uh, and just do a whole bunch of junk fuckery. I want to check out D4 too and give that an honest review uh, and possibly review this rule set too. We got a lot of shit to do, but luckily I got the day off. So we got plenty of time to do it. And it's going to be a day full of complete chuck fuckery. Uh, much as it is all the time. And I want to thank you boys for joining me. Appreciate you guys. I'll catch you very soon. See you over on Stadium PK stream, boys. Take care. Have a great night. Peace.